All right, Paul's ego. You're a fucking monster, bitch. I, I forfeit. I can't win. You lost 11 pounds the first week. I lost six pounds the first, no, seven pounds the first week. And since then, I've only taken off an additional two pounds. So it's obvious that it's fucking impossible to beat you. You're a man with an iron will. And so, the beard must go. Say goodbye. You know, uh, doesn't look too bad, you know? I mean, I could have been a lot worse, you know? I mean... Ah! Oh, God! What have you done to me, Paul? Oh, God! No! Oh, God. Maybe I can find the pieces and glue it back together. Hey, those things won't be so bad, you know? Just, just put it back on there. It's gonna be just as good as it always was. Yeah, uh, just maybe get some glue. <laughs> I know all your worst fears. Yeah, yeah, he did too. I called, I called, I called Ben out on it. I was like, "Fuck you, Ben. You don't know shit. What's my worst fear?" And he just said it. Ben like was just a constant presence of dread all night. <laughs> Every time I looked at him, he'd be staring at me, staring at me with these like. Dying, dying, dying. Just like a completely flat, emotionless voice. You are about to experience the Drunken Peasants Podcast, the greatest podcast in human history. Please recognize that this podcast is designed to be amusing and entertaining, and thus we engage in satirical comments, exaggerations, and even dirty jokes. If you are offended by such things, please go away and die. If you enjoy this podcast, we ask that you help to support its existence by contributing to our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash DP. Contributors get regular access to monthly private shows, special commentaries, Google Hangouts with the peasants, and more. If you don't want to do that, you can also support the show by visiting audibletrial.com forward slash drunken peasants to get a free audiobook and access to over 150,000 and audiobook titles, including great selections on science and skepticism. And if you shop on Amazon.com, we strongly urge you to use one of the Amazon affiliate links in the description section of our videos. You can help support the show simply by using our link to buy things you are going to buy anyway. Now that we've got all that shit out of the way, sit back and enjoy the show. From the frigid armpit of America, this is the Drunken Peasants Podcast with Ben and TJ, bringing you opinions of the news from an altered perspective. Fuck it! <laughs> you got a joint? Uh, no, not on you, man. I don't have facts to back this up. It'd be a lot cooler if you did. What the fuck are you talking about, atheist? Yeah. Okay. You're nothing, okay. KJ. You're garbage. Okay. I just want to no, no, be no, light. No, no, You're no, garbage. No, no, no. <laughs> and now, here are your hosts, Ben and TJ. We'll do it live. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. Fucking thing sucks. Welcome to the Drug and Peasants Podcast, episode 224. And we're doing it no matter what. <sighs> 
I miss my beard. Smoke weed every day. I know. You look utterly ridiculous. I know. It's horrible. I actually am garbage now. Paul, how do you feel about it? How do... Paul, I think you're muted still. Unmute yourself. So busy gloating he can't okay. fucking operate his own shit. I, I'm probably absurdly loud. No, no, you're all right. Go ahead. Okay. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I, I'm just relieved that it's over. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm relieved that it's over. I know this is going to be the outcome. I did think that TJ was going to hold in there for the entire challenge. Yeah, me too. How pathetic. Um, eh. But, uh, you know, he planted little seeds in me that this was going to happen, though, in the last couple of, like, private show or after shows. He was kind of yeah. like, man, I'm done. I'm just going to get pizza. and I, It's over. Paul done you know, one. I want everyone to go back and take Listen a look. Shit I talk. Go go to our Facebook page and take a look at TJ's smug fucking face while he's ordering a pizza for Paul, thinking he's doing something, f you know, creative to win this fucking contest. Paul has an iron will, man. And then look at the you. date that that video was posted. Well, <laughs> I can reveal to you right now that. TJ, you said in the video that you'd only dropped around two pounds. I've only dropped around two pounds this week. So there could have been a shift of momentum in your favor with the exercise bike and shit. Because, uh, you know, I, I didn't lose as much this week. A lot of that but water Paul, weight is gone. Paul, you know, I'm kind of like you in one respect. It's like, I just want it to be over, man. <laughs> I just, I just, I was tired of it. I wanted to be able to eat what I wanted again. I'm like, fuck this. If I gotta shave my beard to eat some fucking Oreos wantonly, like a <laughs> fucking savage. Oh my god. I'm just gonna do it. It's not worth it to me. It'll grow back by this time next so, week. It'll be back. So what was shit. what was your total weight loss, Paul? Um. Well, my last weigh in was 209 even. So. If the first one was 11 pounds, then that's 13 pounds. Okay. Well, you can go on back up to 322 now. Oh, my God. <laughs> you guys are ridiculous. Whatever. Whatever. You don't understand. Well, I'm I don't understand. I'll tell you oh, one no. thing. I do intend to continue heading down the weight trail, but what I was doing was a little absurd, and I'm, I am sure. relieved that it's over. Like, I was eating yeah. nothing but salads every day. You yeah, know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. Like, Slow it down a little bit. It's like, how yeah. can I compete with that anyway, you know? Every once uh, in a while, I'm going to go to... Do the same thing. I'm Don't not, be a little bitch. I'm not willing quit, to do that. Quit giving in to yourself all the time. I can't. I'm very persuasive, dude. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, it's not really weakness. It's just that the gluttonous yes, part of myself is strong. Uh, yeah, if, how come you know? Was, how come you don't focus on the strength of that part of me? You know, TJ, if if white guilt Paul was sitting here instead of white guilt TJ, yeah. yep, you would be singing such a different tune. You'd be I like, "Wait, got no willpower. You couldn't hold." <laughs> Well, Could of course, but also conversely, if you were sitting there uh, like that, you would be fucking singing a similar tune to what I'm saying. Like, you know, you got to take the bad with the good or some no, shit. No, I would be so ashamed. I'd probably not speak the entire episode. Well, I'm not I'm not capable of shame. So I would just allow people to laugh at what I really did. I really do miss my beard. All right. Announcements. Announcements. Hello, Double Chin. How you doing? Um. It's, uh, oh yeah, uh, so first announcement, uh, for the patrons who, uh, are, you know, they, they got the commentary shit, we didn't get to it last month yet, we're gonna be doing that this Wednesday, and you guys are gonna get two this month, uh, obviously one is a makeup for last month, uh, we kept meaning to do it, and then other shit would come up on all the days we scheduled and all that bullshit, so you know how it goes. But, uh, yeah, we're going to get that to you guys. Um, the Patreon show, I don't know, uh, the pri Patreon private show should be coming up soon. Yeah, and that's the drinking contest. And that's going to be the drinking contest between Scotty and Paul, so definitely keep your um, eyes peeled for that coming up. Um, what other announcements we got? Uh, shirts. Yeah, we do uh, have shirts. Still going strong. We got a bunch of shirts. The Paul's Ego shirt still going strong. I think it's still our current number one seller. This is an order. Six of days remaining on it. <laughs> yep. Same thing with Dinor. Yeah, so uh, we got a bunch of fucking popular shirts here. You could buy these. Awesome. Ban fucking Scotty. Ban Ben. I think the Ban TJ one is up there somewhere. Yes. Ban Paul. Dinor. 
fucking classic Dinor shirt, never going to fucking die. We'll probably be selling those to the end of time. Uh, and uh, but my favorite, my favorite shirt we're selling right now really is the the Sun Never Sets in Coolsville shirts. I mean, yep. they are the best ones I think in our store. Like artistically, like they look the coolest of any shirt we've ever sold. So I do like Jurassic Park, though. Yeah, Jurassic Park is, is cool. fucking awesome too. <laughs> and if you already have a Dino shirt, why not fucking uh, also get the Jurassic Park shirt? Because you know you're already wearing a shirt that no one can figure out. I see. Out. You know, you might as well expand upon the mythology. On the horizon, I see more Dino parody shirts. Yeah. And if you guys have any Dinor parody shirt uh, shirt designs you want to send us, we're definitely willing to look at your guys's like shirt designs, but they have to fall within certain criteria. If you just go to Teespring, which is the site we use, you could check out what their criteria for shirts are and send us things along those lines. If you're like an artist or something and you want us to sell your shirt, I mean, obviously it has to be something related to the show. Um, anyway, uh, after after the show. Uh, check out uh, the Drunken Peasants SoundCloud so yeah. that you can catch the post show. We will be doing a post show tonight. With a certain individual situation Yeah, video. there is a, a certain, um, not really a man, but a man-like, cre- man, like manatee kind of sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to be on there. Talk about Brett Keen, everybody. <laughs> yeah, in case you didn't figure that out yeah, on your in own. In case you're really fucking stupid, we're talking <laughs> about Brett Keen. Yeah. All right, so that's enough boring ass announcement bullshit. Let's fucking get into shit. All right, troll or not a troll? It's, it's a troll. Gonna be a troll. The entire universe is trolling us, so it's definitely yep. gonna be a troll. It's a trolly type of night. Yeah, it definitely troll is a troll. Peace. Troll. <laughs> then again, he had to do that to his eyebrow, you know. Or does he not have eyebrows? He's just drawn on. Seeing. Isn't it amazing? There's this body to control. G time, Johnny Junior. He just said control. Isn't it amazing? There's the mind to control. Yeah, the presence of the essence of the second that you're blessed with is the soul. <laughs> wow, <laughs> powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Actually, I, I'm going to say not a troll. Not a troll, really? I think this is just some art fag trying to be deep. Yep, that's my impression. Paul? And when you smile, Paul, maybe you a moment. know you're incredible. Because you are the best. Clear the mind. Take a deep breath. To your diaphragm. We're all fam. All together is one. Everyone is young. Okay. I'm saying not a troll. Uh, f- from what I could hear, I'm going to say troll. There's right. no way. There's no way. What sayest thou, Ben? Wow. You know, um, he sounds almost like G-Time Johnny to me. Yeah. I call him G-Time Johnny Jr. for that yeah. reason. Yeah. So I, I'm going to go ahead and also say not a troll. <laughs> Not a troll. There it is. All right. Um, it, just in case any of you didn't happen to notice the huge jump cut. <laughs> um, yeah, we had to uh, record this. We're still having issues. Paul might be kind of in and out of conversation as his, sh- you know, as our shit fucking goes. And we become robotic. So he'll just have to jump. Is in it OK so capable. far? Uh, well, I can hear you guys fine, but the screen share is frozen again, so I'm going to be playing it by ear tonight. Wow. All right. Holy shit. This is like the fucking hands tied behind our back edition of the fucking Drunken Peasants. <laughs> it's like, you know, you got to beat this fucking giant cybernetically enhanced gorilla. All right, I'll do it. But you got to have both hands tied behind your back and lead shoes. Like, uh... <laughs> shit. My odds just went down. All right, moving on to political shit. Oh my god, it looks like such a fucking dork. Wish my fucking beard was back. Yeah. Grow! Grow! Just bear, ah. just bear down really hard, TJ. Like, like you're trying to take a shit and it forces the follicles out quicker. I think I just shit myself, actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, well. What you gonna do, man? 
what you gonna fucking do? Since I'm frozen, Paul can't see that I'm flipping his ass off right now. Oh. Fuck you, Paul. Uh, Fuck you, Paul. You piece yeah. of fucking garbage. All right, what's next? All right, this is uh, Trump's strategy may not work in Wisconsin. Yeah, he ain't pulling too well there. Yeah. Something's weird in Wisconsin. What's worked for Donald Trump elsewhere may not be working here. I'm a uh, bus operator with the union, uh, local union 998 here in Milwaukee. How long you been doing that? I've been here about six and a half years. Tim Felsky, Republican. I've heard that the main reason, and I don't know if this is going to be their analysis or whatever, I've heard the main reason Trump isn't going as well in Wisconsin is because they're just not as anti-establishment there. They're just kind of like, establishment's fine, whatever. We're Wisconsin. Well, what do we give a shit? It doesn't help that uh, Wisconsin's governor, Scott Walker, has endorsed Cruz, and he's hugely popular in Wisconsin. I thought that, I thought that uh, he endorsed Kasich. No, he endorsed Cruz. He did endorse Cruz. Oh, did he? I read about okay. it, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I don't know. Um, usually endorsements really don't amount to fucking shit, but maybe this one did have oh, some you know sort what? of swaying effect. It was, the well, former, it was the former governor of Wisconsin that endorsed Kasich. Walker, Kasich. yeah. He's kind of a, he's kind of a Republican uh, Jesus figure because he took on the, the public Union? unions and won. Yeah, yeah. I fought the workers in. I won, and the people are like, yeah, fucking workers like me, <laughs> pieces of shit. Like, oops. White, middle-aged, a blue-collar worker, a veteran. Every demographic that has so far been pro-Trump, not here. Where do you stand politically? Oh, definitely a, a staunch conservative, absolutely. I uh, voted for Ted Cruz. Why? I like the fact that he's not... Uh, not some type of fanatic or anything like a like a Donald Trump or something, you know. Oh my Trump God, you're so fucking wrong. Here. He doesn't need all the lobbyist money; he has his own, so he can stand up for the people. But I mean, this idea that Ted Cruz is not a radical is like insane. Ted Cruz is totally a radical. I mean, the fuck, his main reaction when Trump fucking started like, I'm going to deport all the Mexicans, but I'll let the good ones back. Cruz is like, oh, yeah? Well, I'll deport them, and I won't let none back, bitch. <laughs> you know, it's like that he's a moderate. He ain't an extremist like Trump. It's like, what the fuck what? are you talking about? Holy shit. You know, if you, want a, if you want an actual moderate conservative, you should be voting for fucking Kasich, who's still a cunt, but at least he's like a standard issue cunt. You know what I'm saying? You know what you're getting with him, for sure. You're getting establishment politics. Yeah, same thing you're getting with Hillary Clinton. Yep. Even they can see where Trump may have messed up in Wisconsin. I don't think he's appealing to the Walker supporters. Uh, there's a very strong Walker base in the state of Wisconsin. Scott Walker is Wisconsin's governor. You may best remember him for this. In 2011... Your own... Personal conservative Jesus. Evan <laughs> Walker took on state unions in a bitter battle over right to work legislation and won. In 2015, Walker, beloved by Republicans in his state, decided to run for president and lost. What a shame. What a fucking crying shame. It was a was. loss to America. Yeah. Um, he didn't lose. America lost. Yep. Let's be real. Yep. We were denied the fucking greatness and glory of the Scott Walker presidency. Pushed out, many experts say, by Trump. Something Trump likes to brag about at his Wisconsin rallies, while at the same time bashing Walker's record. I wouldn't say that your governor loves me. He's right. Walker endorsed Cruz. But Trump says he doesn't need Walker supporters anyway. He says he's counting on Democrats. And you know, you can cross over. I think I'm going to have a big Democrat crossover, and I hope I do. The head of the Milwaukee Teachers Union thinks Trump is wrong again about Wisconsin. He's heard of crossovers in the past, but... In this election, no. Uh, I have not heard that, and I think it may have something to do with the slight of candidates on the Republican side. Wisconsin voters have <coughs> been politically engaged for five straight hard years. They know the issues, and there are no Trump pushovers. I think that... They know their shows. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Yeah, what congratulations. You, they know the issues. Okay. What's their stance on the issues? That's what's really important, not whether or not they know so, them. I mean, according to CNN, the main 
like the idea here is like, you know why Wisconsin voters don't like Trump? Because they're just too damn smart. <laughs> like, I don't fucking think that's it. I'm sorry. <laughs> that theory doesn't jive with my reckoning of Wisconsin, unfortunately. The, the yeah. and voters are more well informed here. I think he doesn't he doesn't play real real strong with us because we're not we're not as susceptible to his 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 wild man ways his uh, rush, raucous you know rhetoric and things of that nature. Rhetoric. Rhetoric. <laughs> raucous rhetoric. Down here. Okay. Down here in Wisconsin, we is educated. We don't <laughs> we don't fold to no rhetoric. <laughs> no wild man ways. We like us some Cruz because Thag over there said that he endorsed Cruz, and we like Thag. <laughs> Thag. Thag like Cruz. <laughs> I just don't think that plays really well with a lot of folks. So. Yeah. Okay. So Wisconsin. Let me just fucking give you a little spoiler alert. You're actually not smarter than everyone else from every other state. You're just another shithole. This is the thing that confused me, the, the next story that I'm going to play here. This is the former Wisconsin governor saying that Kasich is the best candidate to go against Hillary Clinton. He's probably so, right. Yeah, because Ohio, he could win Ohio, yep. and that would seal the deal for the Republicans in the election. And the most moderate Republicans and independents prefer him, so... But unfortunately, that's not how you get the nomination of the Republican Party. No. You get it by being like... We got to fucking build a rocket ship and send all the Mexicans to the moon. Yep. They'll be happier there, trust Mexican me. Mexican moon base. Yeah. Wisconsin is a very independent state. And when you look at the candidates, Kasich has the pedigree, the credentials to be the best candidate. And when people are saying, you know, you, a vote for Kasich is a vote really for Donald Trump, mm -hmm. it's really not the case. I think a vote for Donald Trump and Ted Cruz. Hey, I'm not listening to you, buddy. You didn't do nearly as much to fuck over American workers as Scott Walker did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's where, the kind where, of shit we want to see. Where were you? How come where, you didn't where, bust them unions? Sorry, go ahead. Where, where were you when them teachers were trying to lobby for a fair wage? Where were you? <laughs> <laughs> just sitting there nodding out. your fucking head. Just like, yeah, maybe they do deserve it, fucking liberal commie. Yeah. Is a vote for Hillary Clinton hmm. because Clinton? the big race, right. the big contest is a presidential election, and John Kasich is the only one of the three candidates hmm. that definitely will defeat Hillary Clinton. I don't know about definitely. I mean,. I think a lot of people just look at that like, oh, Clinton or Kasich, huh? Ooh, what an exciting election. All right. <laughs> Might as well just fucking throw a fucking dart at a goddamn board and be like, yep, if it lands on black, it's uh, it's Hillary. If it lands on red, it's Kasich. Man, that's why. Like, it's like another Bush Dukakis, man. <laughs> that was a good election, Bush Dukakis. You remember that one? <laughs> Bush Dukakis. <laughs> I do remember that one, but it, I, no, I it do wasn't too. Good. I remember it as the most uneventful thing that ever happened in American politics. I think people in the state of Wisconsin should take a real hard look, and I think they will, and I think they will eventually come to the conclusion John Kasich is the best qualified mm -hmm. and is the one that can really do the best job going against okay. Hillary Clinton. Uh, yeah, Kasich has no chance. The end. I think when the people of Wisconsin take a good hard look, they're going to realize Kasich's a fucking guy. All right, moving <laughs> on. Uh, here's the video TJ actually sent me earlier. Oh, um, yeah. The, the girl shoving the kid. It's only 16 seconds, so why don't we just watch the whole thing and then, you know. All right, here oh, we I go. I guess Paul can't see it, unfortunately. But I'll describe it to him as it's happening. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, Paul. You suck. <laughs> Okay, so this girl, this fat girl pushes this black kid. All right, the black kid's picking her up. He's body slamming her. He body slammed her. Now he's holding her on the ground. And everyone was screaming at him, Judah! Judah! What are you doing? The you know. sound, the sound of that video was enough to reduce me to to, to giggles over here. So <laughs> it must have been amazing. 
It was pretty interesting. Uh, I guess what I want to know is, okay, so the girl goes up to him. She pushes him. Uh, he fucking gets up. He picks her up and fucking body slams her ass. You know? Yeah. So it was like Greco-Roman wrestling style. Yeah, and you know it wasn't like she pushed him and then kind of like steered clear. Like she pushed him and then like went over and like started like, yeah, you fucking piece of shit, take that, you know. Yeah. So I don't know. I kind of feel like uh, he he was justified, but maybe other people disagree. I don't know. I feel like that if he hadn't bo uh, body slammed her, um, then he would be doing a disservice to women's equality. Yep. Uh, if, you you wanna think, fight, ben? if you want to fight somebody, um, then you should expect that that person fights back. I mean, at, at face value, good, because I don't know the backstory, I'm, I'm guessing these, these two uh, people know each other. Probably. How, how old are they? I think they are like high school age. I really? Don't know. They look pretty young, I, almost like middle school. Maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, if she's going to shove people around, she, she should probably expect to have something done back to her yeah I, I pretty much agree i saw people saying like both of them should be charged with assault it's like that's stupid they're just kids first of all neither of them should be charged with fucking assault uh but if anything she should be not him he was just fucking retaliating against someone that attacked him so that's bullshit and also she's bigger than he is yeah, I mean, at, at that age, like middle school age, I remember most of the girls in my class were like taller than the guys. Yeah, not in my I, case though, because I was like the fucking size of an of an adult. There were there were like really big uh, girls. There was a there was a girl that was kind of like a bully uh, in my like sixth, seventh, and eighth grade years because she was so massive. You know, so she just, just like, I, threw it around. She yeah, would bully you? Uh, not directly. I was kind of cool with her, but she was kind of known as the person not to fuck with, and like she used to pick fights and stuff. And, um, Damn. So you know, name? I don't know. Uh, awesome Tina. Kong. Her name okay. was Tina. Awesome Kong. <laughs> awesome Kong. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's a giant female wrestler. Yep. Yeah. TJ, with your clean shaven face, you know, put a little makeup on you, you could be a fucking lady wrestler. Yep. Yep. What? Fuck you. <laughs> I don't know, dude. If somebody walks up to me and pushes, <laughs> pushes me to the fucking ground and then stands over me like they're going to continue attacking me, I'm going to attack them back. I don't care if they've got a pair of tits or not. I'm going to defend myself. I'm sorry. I don't I don't I don't subscribe to the never hit a woman uh trope, I guess. No, I mean, obviously there are times when it's justified to hit a woman. There you could never commit to like 100% I would never hit a woman for no reason ever. That's just stupid. Well, that's what, you know, I think a lot of fucking guys were like raised with that though. You know, I know I was parents be like you never ever hit a girl. Well, I mean, ever. Yeah. Ever. Obviously, even if she's coming at you with a knife and she's going to yeah. fucking stab you to death, That's what I'm saying. don't hit her. I mean, it'd probably be smarter to say, you know, keep in mind that, you know, boys are stronger than girls. So, like, don't hit a woman unless she's, like, assaulting you. Yeah. yeah when you, you know, do hit her, you only need about 25% strength. Uh, I, I mean, <laughs> whatever it takes to survive yeah, at that I point. Know, you know, I'm just... Adding I was weird raised, caveats. I was raised the same way as TJ. Like you never lay your hands on a woman for any reason ever. And then I proceeded to get the shit beaten out of me by my five sisters my entire childhood. I've paid my dues to the don't hit a woman thing. Okay. I restrained myself 99% of the time when I was punched and kicked in the groin and elbowed in the face and shit by my sisters growing up. Now, if somebody walks up to me in the street and pushes me over, I'm going to get up and I'm going to body slam them. Well, let's face it. You would probably wouldn't be able to get up. You'd be like, oh, my back. Yeah. Oh, fuck. I'm a broken man. Please kill me quick. <laughs> Call the ambulance. Call the ambulance. <laughs> uh, all right. What else we got? Uh, here's Obama saying Trump doesn't know much about foreign policy. Shocking. 
when a major party candidate is articulating such a reversal in U.S. foreign policy. They tell us that the person who made the statements doesn't know much about foreign policy or nuclear policy or the Korean Peninsula or the world generally. Um, our alliance with Japan and the Republic of Korea is one of the foundations, one of the... Does Obama make, like, a concerted effort to be boring as fuck whenever he speaks? You yeah. Know, like, remember, remember, like, the soaring oratories of the fucking campaign? Like, you know, he was like... He's the ne he's the new Kennedy and shit. Now it's just like, um, you know, well, yeah. you know, I don't think he really knows. What yeah, I mean, I'm just... the the first <laughs> campaign, the first election that Obama took part in. Yeah, it, it, it's like night and day. Like, uh, does Obama have chronic fatigue syndrome? Apparently, I mean, he got is, that eventually. <laughs> what is happening, man? It's like <laughs> Obama looks like he's Look just like him. fucking addicted to Ambien and shit. You know. I don't know, dude. dude. Just like, take but, three Ambien and then resist the sleep, and you get this crazy he's on, high. He's on benzos, dude. He takes fucking Ativan and shit. Yeah, Obama's just like, man, Ativan helps me deal with the fucking rigors of being president. I'll run the country just as good on it, dude. Come on. You know I do. House, the White House in modern times is known to be a, a fucking sapper of life, though. Like, look at, look at uh, Bush. Like, have you seen Bush? Yeah. <laughs> like he looks horrible and and uh, Obama looks horrible now too. He looks like a Sith Lord now. Yeah, dude. His face has been mangled and twisted by the dark side. <laughs> That's the one thing that gives me hesitancy about even if Bernie Sanders did get in. It'd be like, oh, my God. You know, how long would he actually last? He'd look like he was like 300 years old if he, if he did it like a full two terms. Jesus. If he actually survived through two terms, he'd be like 82 or 83 yeah. or something like that. Yep. So, yeah, that'd be crazy. Cornerstones of uh, our uh, presence in the Asia-Pacific uh, region. It is underwritten the peace and prosperity of that region. The, uh, uh, it uh, has been an enormous boon to... This just in, Obama launches tepid, boring attack on Donald Trump. No <laughs> one cares because it's tepid and boring. All right, moving on. Uh, conservatives lose Supreme Court voting rights case. Darn. Yeah, for them. Sorry, conservatives. CNN's Better luck next Bogues time. Live on the steps of the high court with more. What have we learned? The Supreme Court's just come down with an important voting rights case. It has to do with how states draw their legislative lines. Uh, the court said in the 60s to use the one person, one vote, saying that state districts had to be equal in population. But it never said whether that's based on general population or the voting population. Today it came down and said that those lines... Can you hear her mouth, like, crackling? Yeah, what the fuck? They need to uh, <laughs> they need to get some WD-40 in that shit. Lines can be based on general population. That's why do I hear a phone? <laughs> yeah, ringing? there's a phone in the background. How professional! A loss for conservative challenges. Good job, CNN. Lived in uh, a couple of districts in, tes in Texas. We're a shitty podcast. What's your excuse? Their votes were being diluted. They <laughs> wanted the court to look at voting population. It's a victory for the Obama administration and some civil rights groups who came out and said, "Look, this uh, prisoners, undocumented um, workers." children they needed to be represented too i can't even pay attention to what she's saying because i can hear like the saliva in her well it it sounds like she has like cotton mouth really bad yeah dude like her spit is like really thick she was taking viscous. like bong rips or something <laughs> she's like oh fuck gotta do this to supreme court shit all right come on pass the pass the fucking gravity bong yeah, you know, I was like, uh, man, uh, do you got any red Gatorade? So it's a loss for conservative challengers, and it's a unanimous result from the Supreme Court today. All right, well, apparently that has some kind of impact that I don't understand or have any ability to explain. So, yeah. Yay, the conservatives were defeated, I guess. All right. Uh, here's, here's something uh, Hillary Clinton saying. I feel sorry for uh, Bernie Sanders' uh, young supporters. Yeah, I'm sure she does. Madam Secretary, I know you couldn't see the clip, but you probably heard it. You That's said... a good way to get their vote, by the way. I 
Pity how pathetic you are. Vote for me. <laughs> you were caught saying, I am so sick of the same thing. <laughs> She's horrible. Record. What are they lying about? What are you, a fucking bobblehead? Just, just a. Well, let me first say that, you know, I'm, I'm used to criticism. I've been taking it for a very long time, but I care passionately about climate change. And I have been working to try to move us away from fossil fuels. I care passionately about emotions that I have because I am human, much like you. I share your human concerns. As she like goes and like lays down on top of a giant heat rock. <laughs> the welfare of your planet means much to me. Global warming? What? Why would we want an entire planet like a desert for lizards to bask yeah. in? Hmm. So that they can molt their beautiful lizard skin. <laughs> That's all part of her plan. Fucking lizard person, yeah. bitch. You know, I don't believe in a lot of conspiracy theories, but Hillary is a reptilian. I'm sorry. I don't even know if reptilians are real. I think they're probably not, but she is one regardless. There you go. Then, then they're real if Hillary's real. Well, you know, she's the only one that I have absolute proof of. Because it's like so obvious. You so, know? so what is Bill? Um, I think he's just like her slave. Holy shit. Her human slave. She's like, first you become president, then you help me become president. And at, when she lost in 2008, she, like, flogged the shit out of him. And that's why he fucking doesn't seem as sharp anymore, you know? Now Bill kind of just shambles around. Ah, I'm Bill. <laughs> oh, I, I know what I'm doing still. <laughs> she beat I think the fucking sense out of him, dude. I think, she, I think she's just absorbing his, his life energy slowly. And How like, much what time we do you really think they spend together? Yeah, I think what we're seeing is the husk of Bill Clinton. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's been shived by Hillary. Yes. For many years, when I was in the Senate, I introduced legislation to take away the subsidies. I voted against Dick Cheney's energy bill in 2005, and I could go on and on. When I got to be Secretary of State, I uh, was at the original meeting in 2009 with... And I also took $1.3 million from fossil fuel industry lobbyists before the end of 2015. <laughs> oh, no, no. that Those are just lies. Lies. From the Sanders campaign. What? Lies. Accurately describing things I've done? Lies! <laughs> <laughs> President Obama was we trying to convince China and India and others to come on board with uh, accepting some restrictions right. that would lead to what finally occurred with the Paris Agreement. Uh, so when uh, people make these kinds Bow of uh, claims, your which now I think have been debunked, mm -hmm. uh, actually the Washington Post said three Pinocchios, the New York Times also analyzed it and other uh. independent analysts have said uh, that they are misrepresenting my record. Uh, I'm just right. not going to, I feel sorry sometimes for the young people who, you know, believe this. Right. Uh, they don't do their own research, and uh, I'm glad okay. that we now can. Well, I did do my own research, and I found that you're a liar. So what then? <laughs> Am I just doing bad research? Like, is it not true that you got millions of dollars from, well, not millions, but a million plus dollars from the fossil fuel industry just by, by the end of 2015? Not the fossil fuel industry itself, but just lobbyists for the industry. Like, what are we to believe they gave you that money for? Like, what is your explanation for why they just love giving you money? Yeah, I'm going to rein them in, and I'm going to regulate them, and, you know, but, uh, yeah, they like, they like me anyway, and they give me a bunch of money. <laughs> That's like, if I'm, like, the new sheriff in town, I'm like, I'm the new sheriff in town, I'm going to clean this place up. Well, Sheriff, you know, you're accepting money from all the criminals in town. Yeah, well, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Uh, You know, I'm still going to get them. Not now, but soon. Soon Point I'm going to take them down, clean up this uh, town. Reliable, independent analysis to say, <gasps> no, it's just not true. It's not you true. Believe, uh, that it's not all true. Right. It is true she, that you're a reptilian monster, though. She's really, like, got a similar line of defense to Trump. 
Yeah. You know, like, we're like here, here's a picture of you finger banging somebody behind a nightclub in, you know, New York in 1988. No, no, never happened. No, no, it's fake. Nope, never happened. Just not true. Didn't do your research. Here's a, a conservative video that that's entitled free health care and education. Why not free food, too? OK. <laughs> Why are the schools billionaires ask so bad? Funding I'm sorry, on wait, hold on, what? What do you say? I didn't even understand the first sentence. Why did Scary Dab so bad? That's what it sounded <laughs> like to me. I heard Bel Air. You want to hear it again? Why are, I heard no, like, not why really. Why are Bel Air schools, schools so bad? Has escalated Bel Air, okay. It has gone up many, yep. many times from what it was, and yet the schools never seem to improve. Right. And yet, we never see people like Jesse Jackson protesting outside the public schools, even though black kids can't get a good education seemingly anywhere in the whole city or in the whole state. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? Similarly, healthcare. People say healthcare costs keep rising. Why do healthcare costs keep rising? Healthcare costs keep rising for a really simple reason. The yeah, well, I'm going to tell you the actual reason. It's because... We can't, we don't have a fucking universal healthcare system, so the government can't negotiate prices with fucking drug companies and insurance companies and shit. There shouldn't even be insurance companies except for to fucking, to supplement, you know, people who want, like, extra shit that the government doesn't cover. There should be a single yeah. pair of healthcare system where the government can fucking negotiate prices, and then healthcare will fucking, um go down like it like we already we don't have universal health care and we spend more per capita than all the countries that do and yet somehow this is like a financially crazy decision i don't get it like if, if there was no country that ever tried this and you're like we don't really know what's going to happen i'd be like okay fair enough but there's like so many examples of countries who have implemented these systems and they don't spend as much as health care on as we do so i don't understand how you're going to fucking say, oh, well, you know, it's because of too much of that. But whatever. Let's hear your bullshit reason. The guy well, who's yeah. getting the benefit. I mean, just take a look at what at what uh, people pay for fucking prescription drugs in other countries to have an idea how fleeced we are being by the pharmaceutical industry and the insurance industry. Just take a look. Like, it's absurd. Like, we're paying like $900 for a Vicodin. <laughs> and then, like, you can just, like, Take a quick jaunt over to Canada, and they're like, "Oh yeah, that's a two dollar a pill prescription." Well, yeah, and, we're and also, I mean, to make it even worse, you know, we would get charged nine hundred dollars of Vicodin, but the insurance company doesn't pay that much when they buy it for you. Yeah, because they like, are in a position to negotiate exactly. the fucking price. Yep. Imagine if every single person was on the same healthcare system. Imagine the negotiating power we have then. It's like we're gonna pay this. No, we're, it's more than that. It's like, well, then you ain't making any money in our country. Oh, okay. Well, I guess you're what you want to pay is fine then. Don't you see like the tremendous fucking bargaining power you have at that point with these companies? For fuck's sake. <sighs> Not the guy who's paying. Now. <laughs> Now, let, let me engage in a moment of speculative, progressive reasoning for a moment. Okay. We have a right, no less for healthcare, we have a right to eat. Yep. We have a right to food. Yeah. Who would deny that the right to prevent ourselves from starvation is as basic a right as healthcare? Yes. All right. Now, let's have Obamacare as applied to food. Hey, I have an idea. How about we do it like this? How about, like, the people who can afford their own food buy, like, get it? And then, like, the people who can't afford their own food, we give them some kind of, like, card or stamps, stamps of some kind. Wow, that's like a cutting and then edge they could, idea. Yeah, and then they could go to the uh, like the um, the grocery store, and we know they're using it for food because that's all they can get with it. So it's like stamps for food, like food stamps. Like a fo yeah, like a food stamp. Yeah. Wow, it's like, and then they can eat... But we know, you know, and we know they're actually using it for food because that's all they can use with use it for, you know. So that'd be like a flaw, flawless fucking system. I think that would be a good idea. I think you're right. You will now be allowed to go to the grocery store and order whatever you want. Yeah. Fill up your cart. You don't have to pay. Wow. Somebody else will pay. What's all gonna right. happen? The first thing that will happen is you'll take all kinds of stuff that you don't need. You'll fill your cart. You'll buy 12 cartons of milk. And 45 cartons of bologna. Why, why would anybody do that? The milk it's would almost, go bad. It's crazy. It's crazy, too. It's almost like there should be a system in place 
that like like some kind of rationing of the food stamps to prevent <laughs> people from spending all of them on absurd things like 42 gallons of milk when they have to buy bread and cheese and bologna too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's crazy. <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, what is this? I mean, like he's acting like this is some outrageous idea, but our society literally already does this. I mean, <laughs> are you fucking retarded? I mean, I get, I get it that he's trying to take it a step further and say, like, all food should just be free for everyone. No one would condone that for the exact same reasons you're talking about. But free college and free groceries are not exactly the same fucking thing. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not like an actual commodity. Yeah, it's like, if we pay for free college, people are just going to spend their whole life in college learning all kinds right. of shit. We can't have that. <laughs> It's going to be horrible for our country. I mean, when when you talk about food, people actually have to produce the food and ship it and store it and retail sell, you know, sale and all that shit. I mean, the ridiculous thing is, we're willing to spell uh, to spend literally like trillions and trillions of dollars on fucking ridiculous fucking wars and shit, but we can't come up with like a couple billion a year to fucking pay for college. No. And I mean, you know, we we have bases in countries that we haven't had conflicts with in, you know, 50, 60 years. It's like, what? I mean, how many people just go fucking under mountains and mountains of debt just to get their education? And then the fucking first, the, the, for the rest of their lives, the, their jobs they're working are like, yeah, I'm tr really trying to make a dent in this education I paid for so I could get this job and now I'm just doing the job so I can pay for the education I got to do it oh, it no, doesn't dude. seem like a fucking scam to me it's like what the fuck is wrong with you uh, so yeah let, let's fix the scam let's not let that be the case anymore <laughs> you dipshit you know just cuz you I mean you, just cuz you can say like it's bad to give away endless free food therefore it's also bad to give away free college okay well then why it's also by that logic it's also wrong to give away free roads for people to drive on and shit tear that shit down <laughs> yeah everyone should have to build their own road and it will be a toll road that everyone else will have to pay to drive on fucking a man so, like, you know, this, like, 50 feet of road in front of my house, that's my road. Yeah, you're and you're required to keep up its maintenance. Yep. And, you know, if it fucking, if there's a pothole, you got to get some tar and fill that shit. And what? And what's a fair toll, you know, to drive 50 feet? What, like, 50 cents or something? Yeah, a fucking foot, a cent a foot, yeah. yeah. So every 50 feet, you got to go through a toll booth and pay your toll. And you're going to have to pay for, you know, you're going to have to have to pay for the cost of guards to be there to beat the shit out of people if they fucking try yeah. to get by without paying the toll, you know? You have to have armed guards. Or if anything, you can just take them to, to a collections agency. Yeah, you know. Yep. What's what's the uh, what's his alternative to uh, giving people free food that can't afford to buy it for themselves? I don't know. Just like starve. And then you go up to the counter and let them starve. The grocery store will realize that they can charge whatever they want because you're not paying. So they will escalate their prices. Okay, no, you're. What are you fucking economically retarded? Yeah, I mean, is that the government at that point? If they, if the government truly decided, like, you know what, it's logical for us to just pay for everyone's food. That doesn't. The grocery store wouldn't then be like, wow, we could charge as much as we want. What would actually happen is the government would have such fucking power over the stores because, like, look, we are now your one and only single customer, so we're going to get the best fucking price possible. It goes back to the same thing about negotiating the fucking health care rates. I mean, I'm just, I'm sorry, you're, you're fucking retarded. You're literally fucking retarded. I love how these conservative fuckwits will come up to me all the time and be like, you don't understand economics, and then they spew out some shit like this where it's like, you're just an imbecile. I mean, this isn't how this works, for fuck's sake. The basic idea is that what's going on, you and the grocery store are conspiring to rip off the taxpayer. Yeah. A third man is being cheated. And so what's going on with free education, free health care, is the taxpayer is being ripped off to give so-called free stuff. <laughs> One final word about the free education scam. Okay. We're going to give you all a free education. 
right? Yeah. And all the Sanders supporters in the audience go, yay. Yay. But, but how are we going to give you a free education? Hillary's proposal will cost $350 billion. The United States is $17 trillion in debt. We don't have the money, so we're going to have to borrow it. We borrow the money, and who's going to pay the debt? This okay, debt I'm sorry. I don't know what... I don't know what this weird bait and switch was. Like, Bernie Sanders says he can give him free education. Hillary Clinton's plan is going to do that. No, why are we talking about Hillary Clinton's plan if you're trying to refute Bernie Sanders' plan? Bernie Sanders' plan is a, a speculation, a, a tax on Wall Street speculation. That even if his tax dissuades people by 50% from doing Wall Street speculation, even if that makes a 50% drop in Wall Street speculation, it still produces way more than enough money to finance everyone getting college for free. That's the fucking reality. So, you're a fucking imbecile. Everything you've said during this entire fucking rambling ass speech has been wrong. And I'm just, I, I'm embarrassed for you, honestly. And you should be embarrassed for me he is, about my beard. I mean, I've seen him, I, I've seen a bunch of his videos. He is fucking retarded. He is retarded. But I, and then I feel like I'm insulting retarded people. Yeah. So sorry, retarded people. You're know, not this dude. bad. Nope. This this guy is why I can't ra like wave the flag anymore. I can't. <laughs> I can't. I can't hold the fucking flag up and wave it over my head and be proud to be an American anymore, dude. Like, what am I Communism. proud of? America's getting fatter, Communism. dumber. You know, more afraid, <laughs> less and less uh, uh, socially mobile. Yeah, man, America, we the best. Like when we don't, when you, when you, when you live by a pattern of not investing in things that are important to a society, like education and healthcare, this is what you get. Just like a whole generation of dumb people. You want to move on? Yeah, I want to. I want to move on to. I, you know, I, I used to think those horror movies, The Purge, were a bad idea, but I'm beginning to see the logic of The Purge. <laughs> the All purge. right, so uh, next video, Theodore Schubert says that sluts who have abortion should be put to death. Sweet. Obviously, this has uh, something to do with Donald Trump's. Uh, backpedaling on the thing that he said about how women who have abortions should be punished. So I didn't mean punished, punished. Yeah. <laughs> you pro-life bastards! Calm down. You are what I just called you. You are useless scum. Bastards, pigs, swine, lower than the devils that you claim to be fighting against. Okay. Because you do not follow the law of God. Let me tell you what the law of God really says. All right. Let me tell you what the law of God really says. Leviticus okay. chapter 20, verse 2. Thus shall thou say to the children of Israel, any man of the children of Israel or of the strangers. The strangers means this is applied to the Jews and to the Gentiles. So don't give me this crap about oh, this New Covenant, Old Covenant, Old Testament. Screw off with that crap. Okay, well, if, we, if we're supposed to screw off with that crap, why are you wearing polyester fabrics? You're going to hell. You're a moron. I mean, you can't, if you're going to say Leviticus still counts, then you can't fucking break all the rules of Leviticus that you don't want to fucking follow and be like, no, it's okay when I do it. Like, God was literally just as mad about people mixing fabrics as he was about people fucking people of the same gender. It's so ironic that uh, he's showing the verse that mentions Molech. You know, Molech. They, they used to burn children. Uh you know, to praise the god Molech back in the day. That's probably why he's, why he's putting it up. You and know? that's um, that's what that's what Alex Jones claims that they do at the Bohemian Grove with the creation of care. They burn like the effigy of a of a young boy. Well, if it's just the effigy, who gives a shit? Pfft. If they were uh, if they if he had evidence they were burning actual children, I'd be like, we should probably uh, stop that. Yeah. No, uh, no, yeah. It, 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 <laughs> I don't know, dude. I've watched Alex Jones's infiltration of the Bohemian Grove. Yeah. And, like, what I've seen on the thing just looks like a lame summer camp. Summer play. camp summer <laughs> camp for the rich and powerful old yeah. white dudes. Yeah, it looks lame. It looks like they're trying to approximate, like, a Disney ride with the way that the guy talks and stuff. He's like, and lo, down the river comes the man with <laughs> of hair. You know, and I'm just like... 
<laughs> this is the least evil thing like I've ever heard in my entire life. It just sounds it just seems like something I'd hope to be high at. Awesome. All right, let's see what more our friend has to say. Any man of the children of Israel or the strangers that dwell in Israel um, right. give of his seed to the idol Molech, ah. dying, uh, dying, let, let him die. The people of the land shall stone him. Yep. And I will set my face against him, and I will cut him off from the midst of the people, because he hath given of his seed to Molech, and hath defiled my sanctuary, and profaned my holy name. Okay, so that's about giving up your seed to Molech. Yeah, I Molech. Don't, I don't think that women who have abortions are giving up their seed to Molech. <laughs> All right. So I didn't want to have really, to tell the, the verse doesn't really seem applicable. Dude, I don't know. dude, don't talk shit about Moloch, man. Dude, Be I didn't want to have to. I didn't want to have to tell you this, but I actually accompanied a friend of mine to an abortion one time, and held her hand while she was on the table getting the procedure done. And the entire and time, she was screaming to Moloch. She was yeah. like, "Moloch, <laughs> take the flesh from my womb." Sick your hunger, Molek! Child, and you should sustain your evil, Molek! Stupidest fucking shit I've ever heard. Okay. <laughs> Fuck me. That's funny. Alright. Yeah. Fuck. Um, so, Molek. Yeah, I don't know. I've, I've brought up this verse before, too, a bunch of times where there's, like, parts in the Bible where... There's no extra penalty for causing a woman to miscarry. You know, there's nothing in the Bible that mentions abortion. So we, there's really no basis for them to be like, God hates abortion. This is like, that's why they have to pull up shit like this. Because it's like, this is as close as they can find. But really, like, doesn't the fact that God doesn't consider causing a woman to miscarry a second murder, doesn't that kind of tell you what God feels about the fetuses in mother's wombs? I mean, doesn't that seem like a better indicator than this weird Molech shit? Uh, yeah, never mind. The himself. Fact, never mind the fact that like an astonishing number of children are born into starvation poverty on this channel or on on this channel. <laughs> on this channel. <laughs> yeah, this the Earth, yeah, this Earth channel. Yeah, reality TV channel that we're all living in. Yeah, um, man. Yeah, that time those starving kids were born, we had to bring them in here just so G-Man would yeah. admit it for real. <laughs> All right, I admit it, amazing atheist, I admit it. We, 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 we brought some children in here, we starved them, and then we converted them to Christianity, and they still starved to death, thus proving G-Man definitively wrong at only the price of Someone sent me lives. a montage of G-Man just, like, saying stupid shit and acting crazy. Are you sure it was a montage? Are you sure they didn't just send one of his videos and <laughs> no. say it was a montage? No, it was, like, from Hangouts and shit. Okay. Uh, the death penalty yeah. for killing your own child. No, it says you get the death penalty for giving your seed to Moloch, a competing god, okay? <laughs> I mean, it's pretty clear that it's not just spilling your seed, it's doing it for Moloch. <laughs> yeah. And for women, oh, I don't know. I don't know what to do, TJ. I'm, uh... I'm pregnant. I'm I'm young. Uh, I was just about to start college, and you know the condom broke. And fuck, man, I know Molek hungers, so I guess I'm gonna go and uh, and feed his insatiable gut uh, with the flesh from my womb. You know. Yeah, like, I mean, what? if if anything, dude, uh, this guy uh, Theodore Schubat should be fucking grateful that these women are doing this service to humanity, because you know. The prophecies all say that if Moloch is not fed, he will rise from his prison at the center of the earth and begin, <laughs> you know, his thousand-year reign. And, yes. it, you know, based on what we know about Moloch, I don't think you want him in charge. So, you know, really, we should be encouraging more abortions, if anything, because Moloch is dangerous. In yes. Hungry. Yes. And if you're going to jerk off, be sure to jerk. Be sure to offer your, uh, your seed to Moloch, everybody. Yep. I always do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, don't swallow, baby. That's for Moloch. <laughs> <laughs> Holy I mean, why, fuck. Why do you think they, they, they go to such trouble over at the Bohemian Grove to entertain that group of aging old bankers and irrelevant politicians sitting on benches carved out of logs, watching somebody float up and down the river in front of a big owl carved into the tree? 
You know, if oh, it was yeah. like a common practice to give your seed to Moloch, does that mean all those dudes in the Bohemian Grove are like circle jerking yep. in a big bucket and being like, Someone's Moloch, like, this is for you. Someone's like, this time I get to play Moloch. Go on, boys. <laughs> Dude. Do your worst. And that Dude, person they, is George W. Bush yeah. Sr. <laughs> what they do H-W. is senior. they burn the effigy <laughs> of the little... They burn the effigy of the man the cre- in the cremation of care. And then what Alex Jones didn't get is that they all, then everybody from the audience descends around to the altar and puts the fire out with their loads. So wow. they have to jizz the fire away. That, that is the cremation of care. Yeah. Well, that's the cream pie of care. The cream um, pie of care. It comes after the cremation. Yeah. It's a symbol of rebirth. All right, moving on. Uh, Pat Robertson wonders if women should be punished for having an abortion. So now Pat Robertson's take on this. Pat Robertson's going to weigh in on the same issue. You know, it's interesting what Trump (laughs) says. Uh, It shocks people. But at the same time, uh, the old adage was that uh, abortion was illegal, that it was murder. Yeah. And consequently, if it's illegal and it's murder, then there had to be some penalty attached to it. That's why it was so very, very hard to get any kind of legislation against this sort of thing. And now they say, well, it should punish you know, the provider. Who- it bears mentioning that not being able to see this video is actually doubly hilarious for me because TJ has pa- planted the seed <laughs> of him being a chimp yeah. so, so deep in my brain that when I picture him, it's so much like more of like an exaggerated Planet of the Apes chimp-like. And so that's what I get to see when I think of what he looks like while saying this. Just think of Tim Roth, dude. Planet of the Apes. <laughs> does the abortion not the woman who's having it which sounds more reasonable right but in any event if somebody <laughs> says abortion is murder then what do you do to somebody who commits murder i mean so it's a dilemma that people have been wrestling with and I'm no sure it's, it's really not it's not a dilemma people have been wrestling with it's a dilemma you assholes have been wrestling it's already with. gone to the courts you know yeah like we've already most people have already just decided and you know yeah. they don't agree with you most of the world stopped wrestling in the 70s and just kind of yeah. accepts it as a as a part of society now that was the beginning of the new holocaust we're not going to get into it but that does seem a bit draconian but at the same time we've slaughtered close to 50 million unborn babies in america since roe versus wade yeah can you imagine if there was fucking 50 million more motherfuckers going around america yeah jesus 50 million more little mouths to feed 50 million more people that grew up in foster care and hopping from home to home and step parent to step parent yeah yeah Yeah, usually people who get abortions get it for like a reason yeah you know like they Maybe, don't want a child or can't right. support one. Isn't that a good reason? Isn't that like a better, like, would you really rather the child be raised by a fucking family that's just like, ah, we didn't even want this piece of shit. I mean, like, I'm sure sometimes it would turn out okay. Like, well, you know, we didn't want him, but eventually we came. But like, don't you think there's also going to be just tons and tons and tons of cases of like, fucking little shit ruined my damn life. Fuck this kid. Piece of garbage. Uh, Go out there and fucking clean the yard, you little piece of shit. What they want is something that they can't have. They want people to stop fucking. And it's never going to happen. People have always been fucking, and people will always continue to fuck. Um, so what's your, what's your fucking backup plan for 50 million children who were born to parents that didn't want them for financial, emotional, or other reasons? God talked to me last night, and he said, only do anal. It's been a slaughter that is unprecedented. And these are innocent human beings that are being slaughtered. And uh, we had the scandal of Planned Parenthood auctioning off or selling off the various body parts of unborn babies. I mean, it makes you sick at your stomach. But these no, are it actually beings. doesn't. It actually doesn't make me sick at my stomach. <clears throat> but whatever. I have an emotional reaction to this. Therefore, it's logical. Oh, yeah, it makes me much more sick to my stomach thinking of a world where a woman is forced to fucking give birth to a child that she doesn't want and can't support. Um, and then how badly those children will suffer under the conservatization 
of the United States where we're allotting less and less money to such things. Yeah, you'd figure the people who really want, like, we got people have to have these kids. They'd be like the first to be like, and we got to help them be, get raised and make sure they're taken care of. But no, it's like, we you got to have these kids. Okay, the kid's born. All right, well, that's on you now. Hands off from us. Yeah, we, I mean, we I don't want to coddle you. You got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Yeah, yeah. It, I, I know it's been pointed out before, but it really is like, these people care about the child as long as it's in the womb. As soon as the woman squats down and shits it out, they give a fuck less what happens to it. Right. And then, you know, they're also pro-death penalty, but, <laughs> right. but you know, anti-abortion, too. Because, you know, God has a plan for everyone unless they commit a crime that deserves the death penalty. Well, it turns out the plan was for them to be electrocuted by yeah. us collectively. <laughs> yeah. Well, not electrocuted these days. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. Usually gassed or uh, lethal injection. I don't understand what's wrong with just shooting someone in the back of the fucking head. I have no <laughs> idea. Because it looks violent. Yeah, but like honestly, like isn't that just better than pretty much anything else we've ever come up with? Yeah. Just blow my fucking brains out for fuck's sake. Yeah, that won't happen. Then again, I, I might I, not get that crazy like, you know... I, I see I, the light and shit yeah. near death experience like your last little trip before you die. I think people like or are, are get off on the punishment aspect of it. Of like just, they do. just, just shooting a dude in the head. That's no, there's no punishment. It's lights out immediately. Right. Even with the lethal injection, like how often do you hear about people that are jumping around and screaming and yelling? Like they can't even put somebody to sleep and then kill them. Yeah. I mean like, it's kind of weird. Cause you know, you take your dog to the vet, like I need to put down. It's like, all right, it's dead. We, we should, we should give it a shot and it's dead now. Yeah. But if it's a prisoner, it's like, we just can't figure it out. They were writhing and screaming for an hour, and then they finally died. It's like, okay. Yeah. You think we'd be I better think, at this? I think people like that. I don't think it has anything to do with violence. I think people want people to, like, let's strap him to a chair and electrocute him for 25 minutes. You know what I mean? You know They're what? Like, I, I say if you're going to be that violent, though, at least give the motherfucker a sporting chance. Like, all right. You know, we're fucking setting you loose in the woods, and we're going to send 10 experienced Navy SEALs to come kill you. Dude, it's running, it's running, man. Yeah, but if you can if you could somehow manage to kill all of them or reach this point on the map, then you can be let go. You know, eventually that would end up being, like, televised. It should be televised immediately. <laughs> dude, it's running man, dude. It's the running yeah, man. Yeah, it pretty much is. Let's yeah. make it happen. We gotta make it happen. Yeah, if we're gonna become a depraved, fucking sadistic culture of evil fucks, let's at least have fun with it, alright? That's why maybe we should vote for Trump. I bet, I bet if I told Trump about my running man idea, he'd be like, sounds good for America. It would be huge. It would be huge. Uh, I'll use my television contacts. I know all the best people. We'll make it happen. Trump could host it, dude. He Even could. if he is president. As the president, dude, he could yeah. preside over the fucking de grisly death of prisoners. You yeah, know. you know what? He could sit down with them beforehand and, like, admonish them and shit. You know what tell him what he could host? He could host... Hey, boy! Slap fight! Go to see if your ass on the side. I just like that, that's the song is good because like when I imagine bitch boy slap fight, I imagine like right after that argument, the reason that unfunny turned off the webcam and ended the stream is because his mom told like poked her head in and told him it was time for him to get in his jammies and brush his teeth. <laughs> like, I just, I, I just have a feeling, dude. I just have a feeling that him in footed pajamas having a slap fight with another <laughs> dude would be, would be the best thing that ever happened to me. Like, unfunny, please. Please. Yeah, we gotta make it happen, dude. All we need is, like, $250,000. What? Yeah. Well, we gotta build a little arena and shit and some place for the crowd to sit. <clears throat> no, fuck that. Dude. <laughs> I just want it to happen in like Unfunny's bedroom with his. Oh, you guys think way too small. I was thinking like go like full like 
you know, sp sport with it, you know? I, oh, I Get a play. bunch of bitch boys in there, send them at each other one by one, and you just... It's like the UFC Right, of, of like, wusses. <laughs> just get two little wussy guys who can't fight for shit fighting. It'd be the, mo the best fucking sport ever. Come I've on. Already, I've already worked out the bracketing system. Like, I just, I just have a different vision than you. I don't want it to be, like, WWE style, because I really don't think it could be supported in that environment. I want it, I want it shot, like, documentary style. And what it is is, like, it's unfunny versus one dude. And Leave the dude has to, to ruin the dude, it. The dude has to come over to, uh, to Unfunny's house and stay the night with him and play video games. And at some point, one of them has to pick a bitch boy slap fight and it has to be documented on tape and whoever wins the bitch boy slap fight then has to go to the next contender's house and stay the night and play play <laughs> nintendo yeah paul yeah we disagree i think my concept is better oh i'm telling you man this could be we could make some legit money with this we could be the new nfl paul <laughs> B the BB the BBSL dude we BBSL could be the next, we could be the next XFL if we play our cards right <laughs> anyway we have a way lower budget because all we got to do is get some little wussy guys we just offer them like yeah you get like a hundred bucks if you lose and two hundred bucks if you win that's get that's the, the no but that's the problem with your thing though we have this little budget like we just got to give the guys 150 bucks and then book a giant stadium with a bunch we of we don't need a stadium i mean to start off with you just get like a little club or something you know all you need to do is bring in the little bitch boy slap fight ring you can have special matches like in this match they're allowed to throw glitter at each other you know i don't <laughs> fucking give a shit <laughs> and people just come and laugh and mock at them and like you it's like encouraged to like throw fucking shit into the ring as long as it's not like you know, You're throwing glitter in each other's eyes. Yeah, we can even give them like, shit. To, we can give the crowd shit to throw. It's like, yeah, you can throw any of these approved items, and we get like cups. Dude, and... dude, other shit would get thrown all the time. Yeah, well, you know, It'd be as like, long as oh, no one was hurt, it'd be you okay. can throw, you can throw confetti. It would be like a brick, like covered in confetti. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean we'd we'd, we'd have the crowd we'd give the crowd shit to throw. Maybe we just have like a select portion of the crowd yeah. that can throw from like a certain point. They can like stand over and like throw shit at them. Now, I don't TJ. know. It is complicated. I mean, you start simple and you build, you build, you build. You know, you've got to fucking you know you start with the basics. You know, you just have bitch boys slap fighting. When people get sick of that, you got to add a new element. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you build and build and make it more arcane and labyrinthine <laughs> and uh, impossible. Yeah, you it's build. not impossible. It's impossible to have some people standing above the ring throwing shit. No, that's not impossible. <laughs> what the fuck's impossible? If it was like, they need to open a trans-dimensional portal so the bitch boys can fight in the nether realm or some shit, then I would say that's impossible. I just all don't right. think that's. I don't think that's pure. I don't think that's a pure bitch boy slap fight. That's all I'm gonna say. Like I think a bitch boy slap fight has to start over like a video game loss or like. He's a purist. Know. He's a purist when it comes. All right, to I tell you, I, already fights. we're gonna split off. You're gonna be WCW. I'm gonna be WWE, and you know we're gonna have our different approaches, but mine's better. Right. The right. bitch boy slap fight. Wars. Bitch boy slap fight. Maybe the crowd will let us know which is better. All right, what's next? You want more of this uh, new shit, or do you want to move on to crazy people? Uh, I think we're ready to go to crazy people. Okay, then, TJ. Uh, it's one advantage. You're spared. Yes. Ugh. Shit. All right, so first video is a guy that believes that we're in cahoots with Tommy Sotomayor and, and like, we're secretly working together. Yep. <laughs> you crack the case, buddy. <laughs> Got it's us. Sherlock Holmes. It's one of the most ridiculous things I've ever heard in my life. All right, here it is. So... Tommy so Sotomayor and the drunken peasants in bed together. I don't mean sexual, I mean criminal. Don't you? I don't know, but definitely people have been suggesting that Tommy Sotomayor and the drunken peasants are actually secretly working together with a scheme trying to scam people out of their money. Yeah. How, how do we do... How? We're splitting... Maybe we're just splitting the money with Tommy. You know, because he's doing what that money? little fundraiser. A oh. little fundraiser, like, oh, oh, the white liberal is attacking me. But really, he's cutting us in. 
but we probably lost more revenue than he's made. Yeah, even exactly. if we split and, it down the middle. So, and, and by the way, guys, I just wanted to tell you, I I did notice that you didn't send me my Sotomayor hush money this this uh, uh-huh. this month. So get on that. You know what I mean. What are you talking about, <laughs> Paul? <laughs> yeah, you know, know what I'm talking about. We'll talk about this after the show, brah. <laughs> now, I'm not on board with that assumption. I, I'm not sure about whether that's true or not. Okay. But there's definitely been some red flags raised and sure. some new flags just went up. Wow. So, Drunken Peasants made a video about this Tommy Sotomayor false flag in their video. And they just made that video private. You see, it doesn't come up in the search. Now, I warned the drunken peasants, and I warned Tommy Sotomayor that I'm watching. Isn't it that? Isn't that it at the top? Yeah. Tommy Sotomayor it's submits not private. false DMCA against the drunken peasants to silence their criticisms. It's Hashtag not. Hashtag WTFU. It's not private, I don't believe. No, but I mean, it's like, isn't that the video on the screen he's talking about? Yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of confused. In them very, very closely. Not much is getting past me. I don't necessarily say everything that I know. So this <laughs> guy is like, know, yeah, but I yeah. don't say necessarily everything that Not, I know. There's certain that's, things that I'm aware. N- nothing, de- de- definitely nothing gets past this guy. You know, it's hilarious because his video is kind of in a uh, Mark Dice or Vigilant Christian kind of format. Yeah. But he's at the bottom of the fucking conspiracy theory barrel <laughs> with drunken peasants and Tommy Sotomayor. Seriously. They're working together. It's like the Illuminati got too boring. He wants to, you know, do YouTube conspiracy theories. Yeah. It's like, what? what's more plausible? Tommy got butt hurt by some things that we said about him and decided to retaliate against us uh, by filing a false DMCA or... We engineered the DMCAing of our own fucking channel at great revenue cost to us uh, so that he could start some bullshit fundraiser and cut us in on half. <laughs> Maybe we get 90%. Maybe it's just like, Tommy, you're giving all the money to us because you'll get more notoriety out of it. <laughs> but you got to do this fundraiser. <laughs> We're that good. Where of that I'm not putting out there. So Tommy Sotomayor and drunken peasants don't know everything I know about them. Okay. But I've warned them that they are being watched. I was very serious about it. Okay. Which is why the minute that this video went private, I was aware. So here's the video with the update about the false DMCA. Why is it private? What is the drunken peasants trying to hide? What possible lo- Yeah, that was- Oh, he saw that video where we admitted that we were working with Tommy and shit. That we accidentally uploaded and then we're like, Oh, oh. shit, take that down! Take that down! <laughs> we <Yeah>. accidentally <laughs> uploaded it. Like, we recorded it. <laughs> we put it in the upload queue. We made it public. And then we made it private. I don't understand what- What did we do? Oh, I wonder if he's talking about when I made it pri- when I made all the drunken peasants episodes on my channel private. Probably, probably. Because I didn't want like it to take. I wanted them people to go watch them over on the drunken peasants channel. Sure, sure. So maybe that's what he's talking about. But yeah, I, don't know. I think so. I I think you're right. Uh, we we actually put those back up for we various did. reasons. Yeah, for analytical reasons. What yeah. reason could they have for hiding this video? Also, uh, there's no reason because it was uploaded about... on the other channel. <laughs> but when you when you made those videos private, all of those videos were already uploaded on the DP channel for people to watch. So is he talking about like an update that TJ did like on the channel where he was like, hey, here's the update. Here's what's going on. Blah, blah, no, blah, blah. we we had an update on the false DMC. We we had a, an actual episode and in the title it said update oh. on false DMCA. Uh, when we got our channel back, <clears throat> I uploaded those videos just for like completion of the whole catalog of videos. Right. I, I uploaded them onto the DP channel. TJ made them private. 
uh, and then we realized that for certain reasons we had to make it public again. So the videos that he's complaining about being private were available to watch on our on our actual channel. Yeah, nothing gets past him though. Right. Yeah, nothing. Nothing gets past I him. I love how you even like if you can't even make a YouTube video private without someone being like, What's going on? Some kind of conspiracy. <laughs> oh shit, what the hell's happening? I'm watching you, drunken peasants, you crafty bastards. Oh, yeah. If you'll notice, the version they uploaded on the Drunken Peasants channel is one second shorter than the version that was oh. uploaded on the Amazing Atheist channel. What was in that one second? A confession of what they'd done? Perhaps. Uh, lawsuits and Tommy Sotomayor raising money to fight liberalism. And because of this lawsuit, blah, 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 look at these morons. Wilmore Washington. At least we agree you're these people are morons. morons. Candy Barrett, you're a moron. He's got almost $8,000 over a lawsuit that hasn't even happened. And, but then he also puts, it's like, well, it may not necessarily be used for a lawsuit. It's just to help me combat, what was it, white liberals? Yeah, yeah. He's, he why, needs doesn't, why doesn't he just? I don't understand. Like, if Tom, like Tommy knows he's got a, a fan, like fans and shit. I guess he always wants to project this air of success. But you know, I think he'd probably get more donations and shit if he just like came out and like, you know, I'm broke and you know, I done spent all my money on bullshit to make myself look successful. So bail me out, YouTube audience. Thanks. That'd be Jeffrey great. Jeffrey Ping, you're a moron too. Yeah, dude. Yeah, he needs to. Uh, he needs to fight white liberals by paying the absurd mortgage on that stupid house he lives in and that giant SUV he drives. He's already out of that house. That house was like oh. he claim he claims it was a friend letting him live there, and then he got chased off. But I think it was probably just a place he was renting, and he couldn't make the fucking bill. Oh, morons! Well, what's this all about? Raising all this money? That's just speculation lawsuit, on my part. I don't hear any update on the lawsuit. They're supposed to do it one on one. And the thing about it is, it's like, they claim it's like we're stupid. You know, they first Okay, well, out. in your case, yes, you are fucking yes. pretty stupid. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, who, who actually wants to tell all the details about a, a lawsuit? I mean, yeah. like, you're like, oh, man, they're treating us like we're stupid. They're not telling us all the details about the lawsuit. Yeah, it's like, well, who you does guys, that? You guys haven't heard about those popular streams? Uh, Twitch is doing it now. It's called uh, Twitch forward slash murder, where uh, people that are accused of murder, they go uh, they go in, fr like in front of the, the live audience and talk about their legal strategy and shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's pretty fucking awesome. Yeah, so we really, we really should be forthcoming with details about anything that may or may not be planned because um, that really behooves us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it makes our position so much stronger to advertise what we're doing at all times. One on one, Tommy's acting like an idiot. You know what I'm saying? No. TJ no, no. is acting all weird. What? Like, come on, son. Is TJ it acting all weird is normal. <laughs> I can attest. I will back uh, that yeah. Out. So I mean, this is retarded. Anyway, let's move this on. This person All is right. retarded. This yes. person is retarded. This person is literally retarded. All right, next literally one. Fundamentally hey retarded. guys, this is Joshua Sun here. I got a simple question for you. So is this Who one. are you most yeah. likely to get pregnant by? Probably the one that you're most. In well, I don't think I'm likely to get pregnant by anyone. Nope. Because I don't have fucking biological capability. Unless you pull off some Arnold Schwarzenegger Jr. shit. <laughs> Yeah. Intimate with. Now, My I have a movie. question for you. Why is it that we continually watch, I don't know, whether it's keeping up with the Kardashians or, or reality television, social media, we drink these things in. Okay. First of all, I don't watch that Kardashian shit, all right? I've jerked off to Kim Kardashian a few times, <laughs> but I've never watched her show. Second of all, you have no business talking shit about reality TV because... If any of those people offered you the Josh Fierstein show, you know, Fierstein and Friends or some bullshit, you'd be like, oh my god, yes! I'm gonna spread the Lord's word through stupid reality TV bullshit. You would do it in a fucking heartbeat. So, shut up. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. All week long, Monday through Saturday, and then all we do is hold hands with the Bible on the way to church on Sunday. Who I don't even go to that church shit, dude. But he looks like he's puckering up to give me a kiss. Yep. 
Big Who's wet most likely smooch. to impregnate Blech. us? Why, why do I say impregnate? Because the Bible says gird up the loins, the loins, the reproductive area of your mind. The loins of my mind. The loins of your mind. There you go. <laughs> mind loins. <laughs> okay. Fuck that you. That means your mind is a reproductive organ. No. No. No, it's not. Look at his face here. Uh, I'm, I'm, this is like the one time that Paul's really missing something yeah. by not seeing the video. Yeah. Uh, I, every time not, we freeze, like, the face is just classic. I know, like, dude. I've, every time I've, we stopped, it could be a screen cap, dude. I've been present for enough Josh Fierstein uh, appearances to know that it's all gold, no matter where you pause it. It's true. That means that you are either going to get impregnated by the world or the word. Now, let me ask you this. Who's <laughs> impregnating you? Who? Um, <laughs> oh my god, is this so... really the angle? <laughs> Who are you gonna fuck? Your boyfriend the Jesus? Who are you gonna let jizz all up inside your vagina? Are you gonna let Jesus jizz in your vagina? Your or are you gonna let vagina, Billy dude. or Billy from church? Okay, so Josh, this is the worst analogy I've <laughs> ever heard anyone use. You're basically talking about there's loins in my mind, so there's you're basically saying like who who do you want sticking his big pecker down your mind, vagina? <laughs> the world or God? It's like, oh, I guess God. Like, your brain is a reproductive organ and it's going to get pregnant either with Jesus juice or with the fucking tepid wastes of this world and all of its sin and decadence. Uh, he started off this video with a statement that puzzled me. He was like, Who's most uh, likely to get you pregnant? The one you're most intimate with. And I'm just like, well, wait, what? <laughs> like, no, it's the one that fucks you. Like, intimacy is not just sex. Like, they can't just, like, take the word intimacy and have it mean sex. Just say sex. Yeah, like, Paul, you remember that, that time we were in Los Angeles and we just kind of, like, sat and had that fucking five-day conversation where we, like, bared our souls to each other? Yes. I didn't want to tell you the time, but I did get pregnant from that. <laughs> oh, shit, man. That intimacy. It was that just that was intimacy that in we had, that, you know? I've got to call my mom uh, because uh, I think she's in menopause now, but if she's not, we had a pretty intimate phone conversation the other day. Shit. And, uh, Impregnating she, your own mother, you sick, sick fuck. Uh -oh, Why are you so intimate with her? This is dark. You intimate <laughs> swine. Who are you most intimate with? Because if you spend time with the world six days a week and only time with God one day a week, who's most likely to reproduce in your life? Okay, this idea that we all have a mind vagina is really the worst fucking thing that you've ever done. <laughs> it's even during the really Starbucks positive. cups, man. It's really it's positing that everybody on the planet has a spiritual mind pussy. <laughs> that, that has to be getting fucked at all times. And who are you gonna who are you gonna let fuck your mind pussy? Is it gonna be Jesus or the world? <laughs> oh my god. Josh, you sh this should never have like come off the cl cutting room floor. <laughs> there should, they, they, you should never have watched this and gone, yeah, 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 spiritual mind cunt. That sounds good. Let's go with it. Yeah, like I don't even, it's not even worth it criticizing the stupidity of the ideas because really the idea is very basic. Like you need to give more of your life to the Lord, but the analogy is so inept and horrible yeah. and ass backwards that it's like, Josh, like even even we, as people who understand your shtick and understand what you're doing, like even we're telling you, like you know, you've gone too far, Josh. This one just, you know, you've you've hit some of them out of the park. Your whole like, yeah, man, ten thousand dollar challenge to prove atheism or whatever it was, and you know, you're fucking. There's no Christmas on the coffee cups. I even got you on the mainstream news and shit. Great, good for you. But this mind vagina shit. Like, you only let God fuck your mind, pussy, one day a week, but the world be all up in that shit six days a week. So, who you think's gonna get you pregnant? Think of them odds, man. It's like, oh, shit.
What a terrible, terrible fucking analogy. No one wants to think of their mind as a fucking vagina that's just, like, <laughs> eager to accept fucking divine or worldly dicks at any time. Dude, 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 I'm so eager to stop letting the world blow loads in my mind vagina and start letting Jesus, <laughs> Jesus fuck my, my psychic pussy, dude. I really... I've heard All he's right, much I'm, better. I'm doing it. I'm doing a new art contest. Fifty dollar prize. Oh, whatever. You, you know what? I did. Don't no, do I did it. award the last one. So oh, okay. I I paid the last person, so it's good. Uh, this is a new one. Fifty dollar prize. I want you guys to depict the mind vagina and how it works. And and where are they submitting this to? Because I wouldn't do it on Facebook. Yeah, do I'm it. Uh, just tweet it to me. I would say Tweet bonus. To the amazing atheist. I would say bonus points maybe for depicting Josh Feirstein getting fucked in his mind vagina by either. I was Jesus gonna leave that it. open to them, you know. Uh, let them. Okay. I mean, that was kind of what I was thinking, but yeah. I wanted them to bring their own ideas to it. But okay, thanks for coloring the whole thing, Paul. You know. That's why you gotta get in the shit, word Paul. of God because the word of God this is, is uh, this is over, dude. And it's meant to get inside of the reproductive area of your mind and recreate oh, wow. right. the scene. Literally... Now we're talking about jizz. Yeah, yeah. So now we've <laughs> moved on from God fucking your mind pussy to now he's blowing loads in your brain. And 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 God's jism is just entering all the corpuscles in your brain. <laughs> Filling in all that space with this big, warm, thick, godly cream pie. Like, what yeah, dude, fuck? can you just imagine your fucking mind vagina? And <laughs> it's like just dripping with God's cum. It's just getting all over your fucking face like you're a fucking <laughs> Cinnabon or some shit. <laughs> and God's just sitting there like, see you next week, baby. <laughs> Zips up his fucking fly. Puts his robe back down. Fucks off back to heaven. Oh my god, dude. See you next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> next Sunday. What a piece of shit. It's in you the hope of glory. So I challenge you to do exactly what the Bible says. Whatsoever things are good, honest, just, of a good report, think on these things. God bless. Have a great day. Please take a moment. Encourage somebody else by clicking share on the video. Like, comment below. If you're not my friend already on Facebook, click my name at yeah. the top of the video. Let's be friends. God bless. Have a beautiful day. And let your let your friends know who should be fucking their, their psychic <laughs> pussy. Please. Uh, wow. Just fucking wow. He's a fucking gold mine. Everything he says is absurd. Like, even it when is. he's trying to be, like, reserved and shit. I watched a video of his where he was like apologizing for failing because he did some shit like and people jumped on him for it. I don't even remember what it was over. Like, he said something and people it got it went viral and he got a lot of hate. He was still like just in his car all subdued spouting absurdities. So uh, over the past few days, uh, the the guy, the YBN atheist guy, the guy that writes the Anita Sarkeesian erotic fan fiction made a few videos uh, with some interesting information. Okay. Oh, okay. So and and they're they're kind of short, so I'll just play them here. <laughs> it's pretty interesting what's going on with him. Good afternoon, folks. We're going to start this video out by taking a picture of my hero wall. And as you may notice, we have some feminists on there actually. Alice Paul, Margaret Sanger, and Harriet Tubman. And he's written erotic fiction about all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the Underground Railroad with Harriet Tubman. <laughs> I stuck it in her tub, man. I guess, uh, according to this video, he claims that Anita mentioned him oh, and TJ. I'm sure she did. So Maybe. let that sink in a little bit. I could just come out and say the ramifications of such. And in fact, I read an autobiography about Emma Goldman, and I almost considered placing her on the hero wall. Your hero wall sucks. Yeah. Yeah. It's like construction paper. Yeah. And none of those people are cool. They all suck. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? Like, who the fuck is the cartoon character? Is that, like, fucking Harry Potter or some shit? <laughs> it's his hero. 
I can't tell what the fuck I'm even looking at there. So just let that sink in and ask yourself, what could the possible meaning be here? Now, I'd also like to make an important announcement. All right. Oh, Anita Sarkeesian apparently knows who I am. Hey. Why do I say that? Well, it looks like she's mentioning me in this article in the Mary Sue. It says, Feminist Frequency Ordinary Women Campaign Keeps Kicking Ass Despite Harassment. All right. It's one... Two, three. You know, you four. know what? This, the sad thing, the sad thing about this is, is that the article that he's referencing is right. referencing CJ, not him. I and know. he's just revealed, he's just revealed what all of this about is about. He desperately wants Anita Sarkeesian or one of the other girls that he's writing this erotic fiction about him uh, or about them. So to acknowledge his existence. Here's the twist. Here's here's the second video. His fucking erotic fiction got taken down. Boo! Uh, so, I'm glad we have one of them somewhere Greetings. around here. I have something I'd like to read to you. Good morning, Andrew. As publishing erotica regarding living people can result in both you and Smashwords <coughs> being sued by the person in question, we have unpublished your Anita Sarkeesian erotica and must inform you that we cannot accept similar works in the future. Thank you. And that person's name. I'm not going to give you their name. Isn't this interesting? <clears throat> yeah. No. Isn't this? It's actually not interesting at all. Yeah. No. Um, I, I, I could have told you that was like a legal issue waiting to happen. Yeah. Um, all, but I mean, like, it's pretty easy to fix. All you got to do is go back, change the fucking name to whatever. Christina. Yeah. Christina Slamigian or some bullshit. Yeah. I don't know. What, a la find a last name that sounds like Sarkeesian. I can't think of any that are similar. But um, yeah. you'll notice when you go into a Barnes and Noble, the books aren't populated exclusively with books like. How I fucked the pussies of the Dixie Chicks and how yeah. the Queen of England rode my dick. You know what I mean? Like it's there's no you know, it's this is not interesting at all. There's no conspiracy here. The places that you're selling your books don't want to be associated with you because they don't want to be implicated legally if you get sued. It's a conspiracy. Interesting. Tommy Sodemeyer and the drunken peasants pulled it off again. <laughs> What would be the result of a lawsuit? Who would win? The good news is... It's hard to say. Immediately after I found out... Yeah, I'm sure they just don't even want to deal with the prospect of the lawsuit, regardless. Yeah. Think about I mean, it. Th think about it. Like, if there was a dude that you, were, you didn't even really know, right? You kind of knew him, your business partner with him, and all of a sudden he's like, Hey, man, can I come live at your house? Now, listen, I'm under indictment. I might be sued, and you might be implicated if I live with you, but I got a pretty good case. How often are you going to say, yeah, man, come on and crash out <laughs> on my couch? It's cool. Zero it's percent good. of the fucking time. This site took my books down. I posted my books on another site, and they were even on an, another site already. So there's other forums to pursue. That's the plus. And if worse comes to worse, I can always sell stuff directly. Now, I don't intend the law to stop me. I don't intend the powers that no, be to not stop the law. me. It's not the law stopping you. It's the marketplace stopping you. Nobody wants to sell on their storefront a creepy fucking fanfic of you raping different women. <laughs> that you're obsessed with <laughs> nobody wants to deal with you in a business sense um, just just look at it deconstruct it in your brain and look at what you're doing you're like hello sir hello proprietor of books i've written this book about how i seduce and rape and fuck in the ass uh, you know like a modern feminist icon want to sell it you know what I mean? Like, that's really what's coming down to it. Like, like, there's no conspiracy. Anita Sarkeesian herself is not pulling the puppet strings on this one. You're just living an absurd fantasy. This is uh, bad news for the new book I was going to put out about um, the time I fisted Gloria Steinem. <laughs> Shit. So... <laughs> it's gonna be, you know. I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of on on pins and needles waiting to see what turns out about this because you know I might not even be able to release my book. Yeah, yeah. What, what happened to freedom of speech? God damn it! 
I'm, I'm definitely gonna <laughs> definitely gonna back burner my Ruth Bader Ginsburg fingering short story that I've been uh, teasing. Finger banging. <laughs> Finger Ruth banging Ruth, Ruth is what I call it, and uh, <laughs> it's about me being a uh, cleaning boy at the Supreme Court, and I get stuck under the desk uh, during oh, a shit. session. Oh shit! Yeah, it gets wet and wild down Whoa. beneath. Whoa, wow. that's <laughs> hot. <laughs> yeah. Classic. My whole life is getting towards bringing everything out into the open. Other people like to suppress things and bring them down, authority figures, superiors, and all the like. But I like to bring things out in the open. So I don't like suppression and I try to bring things out in the open. What would be the result of a lawsuit? Who would win? All I know is this. Freedom of speech is worth fighting for. Okay. Good luck with that. So, yeah, he made one more video, and he's trying to raise $500. He wants people to give him $500 so that he can pay Anita Sarkeesian to do one of her, like, Patreon perks or whatever it is. Uh, you know, every single one of those perks, she says, um... It's at my discretion. Of so course. She can easily just say. Everyone should put that if they have that. I mean, yeah, I mean she's just going to say, no, I'm not going to do that. And that's going to be that. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Anyway, well, we don't have to watch it, but it is pretty crazy. That guy's like cray. Yeah. He's cray cray. He cray. Um, oh, here's uh, the captain. The captain. Yeah. <laughs> Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am going to charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! What's you know, going on? For the night. Uh, his long, boring, tedious intro where he shows a bunch of random nonsense yeah. that doesn't in any way have anything to do with anything that's about to happen and now gotcha. the video is actually finally starting yep. he decided to put a pointless get rid of the bullshit. intro i mean like <clears throat> if you watch the beginning of our of our show you can see you know we have an intro it kind of shows what goes on, on right the show. and also we do a three-hour show yeah true and it's also a podcast so yeah, yeah and there's I'm, like a maybe that is shit Maybe that is what he's doing because I'm not able to see it. But what I heard was the ravings of a fucking street lunatic. So maybe that's maybe that's what he presents. He's like, "Yeah, I gotta charge ya." It's like, "No, I'm not gonna get there, you so." You know what I mean? It just sounds like a homeless guy with a sign that says "Repent now." Uh, dear Aaron, your last video was good. I wanted to ask you for advice on something else. Both my parents love Barack Obama and think he's the greatest president in history. <clears throat> my siblings are also leftists as well as my aunts, uncles, and cousins. The majority of them are teachers and academics. I think You know, I know people that like Obama, but I, I don't... I haven't really heard them say that he's the greatest president in, in history. No. Uh, yeah, I've, I, I mean, I know a lot of left-wing people and shit. I haven't really heard too much, like, gushing about how great Obama is. Like, I don't know. I mean, maybe somewhere someone is, I'm sure. But sure. No one I know. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I I don't hear anybody gushing about Obama uh, amongst yeah. the leftists and stuff that I know either. I've never heard anybody gush about Obama this I, I year. Mean, yeah, yeah. When he was on the campaign trail the first yeah. time, yes, sure, absolutely. But that wore off, just like we discussed earlier. And and his, I mean, that's when he had so much promise to him. I don't. Th I don't think he's like. I don't fucking look at Obama and be like, oh, my God, worst fucking no, president or anything. But, but not you know, best. Certainly not best. Probably yeah. just like right there in the middle, mediocre piece of shit. Uh, conservatives are racist, crazy rednecks that deny science. Okay, so they're, they're teachers and academics. They're gone. They're part of the clergy. Um, they have not worked in the real world. They have never smelled the real world. How do you they get to decide what the real world is? Dude. The real world is just like... His world? You know, anything he likes is the real world. Like, people who are academics and shit, that's obviously not that's, the real that's world. That's not the real world. No, I, I think that also qualifies as the real world. People don't know what it's like on the real world road rules challenge. <laughs> you know, it's like, man, fuck you. So, shit. just keep in mind with who you're dealing with, even though you love them and flesh and blood and all that. 
<coughs> in the novel, I have a shrug. There's a character named Hank Reardon who gets constantly bullied by his family. Oh, my God. I don't know if you read the book, but the situation. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Really? Really? You're going the Atlas fucking shrug route? Oh, <sighs> man. I remember. I've read the fucking... I read the book. Um, I used to be a retarded libertarian when I was, like, 15, so... I did read that. Um, and, um... Yeah, Hank Reardon, like, I remember there was a scene, and I think it was with him, where he's, uh, he has his family, and they're all, he's like a, you know, business magnet, and they're like a bunch of liberal, smarmy whatevers, and they're like, you're raising money for charity, and he's like, all right, I'll give, uh, you know, these, you know, $10,000 to your charity or something, and instead of being grateful, they're just like, yeah, fuck you, you rich yeah. fucking elitist piece of shit, like, because that's how liberals are, like, Ayn Rand's book is just like the most stilted like I mean like if I was gonna write a book where there were conservative characters I would at least try to fucking represent what they actually believe and not fucking just like make them fucking ridiculous parodies of like themselves um, Ayn Rand doesn't bother with that every fucking buddy who's left wing is just like um, basically Michael Savage's fucking nightmares or some shit. It's that kind of uh, religious thinking that creeps into people's thought patterns and shit. Like, I recently, because you and I talked about it, I caved in and I watched The Passion of the Christ, right? Yeah. And the most, the most striking thing about the movie to me was his portrayal of the Jews. Like, the entire audience of Jews are all just these ugly, warty just densely evil things. He's like <laughs> I mean, something that you would expect to be like worshiping at the feet of Satan in some fantasy film. You know what I mean? Like, just like, give us Jesus's blood. Let us, you know what I mean? Like there was not a single Jew in the movie that was at all human, except maybe the one guy that's forced to uh, help Jesus carry his cross. Is but it like, true that, that that was performed in medieval times to get people to hate Jews? <laughs> yes. Yes. That actually is true, yes. So, yeah, there you go. It's still performed today. Like, the head Jew guy looked like somebody just put a robe and a beard on the old Nosferatu thing. <laughs> like, he was just like... Mm, with his long fingers and his maybe, like maybe uh, Passion of the Christ is a subtle prequel to Nosferatu <laughs> maybe so <laughs> shows what he was doing before he became you know uh, yeah I mean they do live forever so, so yeah you know it's very, very similar to my own I've been made fun of for liking Donald Trump and Ron Paul I also get called selfish and moral because I'm sorry I hold like on school. wait why would you like Donald Trump and Ron yeah, Paul? Yeah, I, I don't fucking get that. That makes no sense. Donald Trump is not a small government conservative. Yeah, you know what? I saw I saw Donald Trump speaking at like a Tea Party event. I'm like, how the fuck are the Tea Party people getting behind Donald Trump? It doesn't make any sense. It's because, you know, really, these people, they, they say they're about small government and shit, but what they really are about more than anything is just like authoritarianism and xenophobia. Yep. That's really what it boils down to. Obamacare and socialism. In the past, I've tried to explain to a few family members why I was conservative using the rational arguments, oh, you foolish boy. But they would just call me names, quote John Stewart, or not listen at all. I realized that instead of having a discussion with them, I was defending myself. Here are a few points they've made. Wait a minute. Uh, the economy defending yourself. It sounds like you were having a discussion. It just sounds like you were losing. Yeah. I just wound up defending myself from criticism. There was no discussion. What? If there was no discussion, how was there criticism? Yeah. And it's like, oh, they just responded with John Stewart quotes, but here's a few of the arguments they've made that I can't respond to. Would you respond to them for me? So that I can keep my shitty beliefs intact? <laughs> uh, okay. It was doing great while Bill Clinton Pathetic. was president and Bush ruined it. Well, no, that's... That's not true. It was under. It was great under Bill Clinton, and it was great under Bush. And both of them ended their presidencies in recession. But apparently, I, again, we're talking you and me statistics, but I'm shooting these out very quickly, one by one. The bailouts in Obama saved American economy, and now it's better than ever. Actually, the bailouts were under Bush, uh, and Obama just spent a ton of money. And no, it's not better than ever. It's actually very lethargic if you wanted to use GDP figures labor force participation, unemployment, stuff like that. It has not been better than ever. The best it was in, in quite some time was uh, under... You're just ignoring the fact that 
These companies are making record profits. According to them, everything's peachy keen. It's just, you know, the middle class that gets fucked. So, yeah. Clinton, under Bush, right before both of their presidencies went into um, recession. And then Ronald Reagan actually was the, the best time before that. <clears throat> George proof is capitalism doesn't work. No, George, uh, George Bush, it's not capitalism. We bailed out the banks. That's, that's not the definition of capitalism. So they have a wrong... Wow. So you, you just get to go around deciding what is and isn't capitalism. Yep. Everybody's like, okay. Mario. Everybody's Mario. Is you're right. No true capitalist would bail out the banks. Yep. What are you talking about? The reason that we bailed out the banks was because the entire economy would collapse if we didn't. Because we allowed the banks to get too big to fail, and we have fucking deregulated them so they could fucking make all these risky investments and shit. And yeah, Bill Clinton had a hand in doing some of that deregulation, and George W. Bush had a big hand in doing a lot of that deregulation. And then we, we it was up to the taxpayers to bail them out when their fucking risky bets fucking failed. They were, they were doing all these predatory loans on people and shit. Like, oh yeah, you can afford this. Oh, you actually can. I'm lying to you. Ha ha ha. I mean... Yeah. Shit. That's the conservative <clears throat> mindset, dude. We can we can afford to to spend billions and billions of dollars giving everybody a golden parachute uh, down from their CEO office, but we can't you know send people to school or make well, sure we said, have a faith. He, he seems like he's against that because he says that's not true capitalism. They, they, they can't build a train to ship people around on. You know, like yeah, they don't want to spend any money on anything. You know, to help regular people i just want to know what the fuck is true capitalism in his mind like what what preclude what in capitalism precludes that is it just the fact that there's a government at all do you want like an anarcho-capitalist thing going on where just everything is handled by private industry and there's no overseeing body the thomas hobbs is leviathan has been fucking shot in the face and buried in the middle of the ocean what they don't know what they're talking about with capitalism uh, <clears throat> global warming is going to end the world unless we all go green. Even Warren Buffett wants higher taxes. Okay, so they're wrong on pretty much all this, or they're they're really they're not only cherry picking, but they're slicing out a piece of the cherry they want and leaving the rest. I try to keep myself to myself when visiting family, uh, but they usually find a way to rope me in. Okay, so they're picking fights. Even if I don't get involved. I cringe hearing them talk about Obama I in mean, the country. This guy's like, oh, they're picking fights. This is this is the guy that makes all these videos. They're so like this letter he's reading is fucking overly long and right. it's so contradictory left and right. I mean, like he says, like he brings up the discussion, but they don't want to fucking say they don't want to have a discussion. But then he says they bring up points against him, and then he says they pick fights with him when he's the one who said earlier he initiated this discussion. I don't get it. Like it's just all over the place. Uh, like he's presenting just a very inconsistent narrative that's impossible to believe. It's impossible to follow. Yeah. My sister, for example, is majoring in English because she's a lazy, lazy cunt. I added that. That's, you won't say it. And after trying what? to convince her that... She, wait, so she majored in English because she's a lazy cunt. So it's not important that there's anyone who understands the English language at a fucking higher level? Yeah, well, you know, you know when, I, uh, when I think of a lazy person, I think of all them lazy-ass college students. <laughs> Going to classes and doing hours of homework and working at a burger joint yeah. to support themselves. Like, what's he fucking talking about, lazy English yeah, majors? Yeah, I mean, essentially... This is a guy who, who fucking charges people, like, 75 bucks <laughs> so he can make videos. <laughs> Full-time college students, if they have a part-time job, are basically working two jobs. One full-time job that they're not getting paid for, that they're actually getting in debt for, usually. Yep. They're paying for the privilege of right. being there. Exactly. I also just, I don't understand why that major is like, oh, English. I mean, it's not like she's Seems fucking useful. majoring in interpretive dance or some shit. I could kind of yeah. maybe see, like, that's wishy-washy. I mean, I still wouldn't disagree. I think people should get an education in whatever the fuck they want. But... Yeah. At least She's I can kind of understand the reasoning there. Like English, that's actually applicable. That's actually usable. What if she? What if she goes on to become a fucking proofreader or something? I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of fucking things you can do with an English degree. Yes. My my Anything. sister's majoring in uh, engineering. Because she's a lazy fucking cunt that just wants to learn how to build things and stuff. Oh, I mean, you know what? I mean? Like what? <laughs> 
Think about think about all the countries that speak English as their second language. I mean, it teaching, would qualify you to teach English in pretty much any of those places. Yeah, teaching English is a viable uh, profession. Uh, being a writer is a viable profession. Yeah. Uh, all of these people are English majors at the beginning. It's not even just like being necessarily like a writer. You could be like a technical writer. You could fucking major in English and then major in fucking science lazy writing cunts. or any sort of specialized writing. They're field. all just yes. lazy cons. That's just terrible. He's a fucking imbecile. That's a very. Bad I can't believe idea people pay this guy for money. Yep. I mean, pay this guy Wait, money to fucking exp like make arguments for them that they're too stupid to make themselves. Is that really like, what's going on here? Because I'm yes. I, I don't have the context. He charges this people. Guy, yeah, this money. guy that we're watching charges We've watched people. Him before. He charges people money to make these videos. Yeah. They send in stuff. He responds, but not before he gets paid. He's like a libertarian economist. I, I mean, I don't even know what his qualifications are. He has a PhD in retardation. Waste of money slash time. She said I was an asshole. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Last week, I was told I shouldn't right. even I shouldn't feel good that I support myself at the age of 23 because of my white privilege, and if I was black, I would be unemployed. These sounds like assholes. They sound like fucking assholes. Seriously, they definitely love their politics and they love their ideology more than you. Based on wow. their based on their, this one-sided account from a clearly biased source, they're assholes. Yeah, and they love their ideology more than you. It's like what? What, your family disagrees with you? They love their beliefs more than they love their own son. Yeah. They I should coddle you and be like, you know what, son? Even though everything you think is ass backwards and stupid, it's, all, it's great and we love it. It's like, what the fuck is going on? Uh, uh, that, that much is I obvious. Just, I'm stunned if still by the fact that people pay this person. Yeah, this dude's and, he, and this is what he delivers. And they go back and they watch that and they go, they, yeah, this is the dude I want making my fucking argument for me. <laughs> he hasn't even started yet. He's still reading the letter practically. He's made like a few little comments here and there. Take a, a, a All right, genuine now, I guess now he's kind of started. An accomplishment like that right. because you, where you support yourself at 23, whereas very few millennials do that. And they're going to call you racist because of that? Fuck them. Please let I, me know. I don't think he said they called him racist. They said it was because of white privilege, which is probably the most retarded thing they said, according to this guy. Right. Who knows how much fucking trustworthy he is or how he might be distorting what they fucking said because he's a fucking clearly biased person. And his letter to you is full of contradictions that if you had a fucking brain, you'd have noticed for your fucking self. Goddamn mental invalid piece of shit charging money. How about I fucking pay you some money to come over here and kiss my fucking ass? What you do in this situation and how to cope with this better? All right. Uh, Seriously, three hundred bucks. What I would recommend. Pucker up. In your particular case, normally what I'd recommend is you go in. You're in a kind of a similar situation I was in when I would go to parties in Minneapolis. And this is all. This all got started, by the way. The liberal like mecca the of Minneapolis. Like <laughs> <clears throat> and what I would do is I resort to this thing called the betting tactic. I have a video on it, but very shortly, it, it's basically <sighs> nobody, they can call you a racist or that you got privilege. They can, they can, because it doesn't cost them anything. What you need to do is associate a cost with their ignorance. So you have to wait for there's something that can be, especially now everything can be proven and looked up so quickly on the internet. Back in the 90s, it wasn't so. But now that we have the internet, you can use the betting tactic. And what you have to do is wait for one of them to say something that you know for a fact is not true and something that is provable. For example, George Bush ruined capitalism or proves capitalism doesn't work. That not That's totally fucking subjective, yeah. you moron. I don't know if he proves capitalism doesn't work, but, I mean, he definitely... Uh, he fucked up. Yeah. Yes. <sighs> Jesus. What a shit sack. And well, I would, flush this turd down the toilet. The man. whole, like, neocon system of economics was definitely bad for the economy. Yeah. Well, I mean, look at where it led us. We've been, yeah. we've been operating on this transfer of wealth from the fucking lower part of society to the upper part. That's our thing. Quote, unquote, trickle down economics, which is really trickle up. As they, yeah. as they, as they fucking siphon up uh, economics, yeah, yeah, hover over us like giant bloated vacuum cleaners and catch any loose change that may be in our pockets as we go to work to slave away for them every day. Yeah, trickle down economics. 
It's gonna uh, get even smarter in here. Obama's Jurassic Hello, Park. Wild Bill from Why not America a Jim Asic Park? I was bored the other day, so I ended up watching the latest Jurassic Park movie, and it was beautiful. Gorgeous tropical island scenery and moms and dads and children having fun and enjoying the wonderful dinosaur exhibits. But you'll never. Okay, I'm just gonna ask this once. Are you aware that Jurassic Park is not a real place? Because you're talking about it like you think it's real. And the families were there with their little kids enjoying the wonderful dinosaur exhibits. I'm thinking about going myself. Like, what? <laughs> hello, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, Wild Bill for America here. Uh, presenting you another video chock full of fantasies. Uh, the fantasies of an old man losing his virility, losing his relevance <laughs> in life. Ruminating about the existence of a dinosaur park that doesn't exist. Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at his face. I hope he's going somewhere with this, man. I hope he's going somewhere Please, with this. Please, what happened? The dinosaurs got out and began eating people. It was... Wow, just like in every other Jurassic Park. I can't believe that it would follow the same formula it has since the beginning. That's crazy. Thanks for telling me what the plot is of a movie everyone knows the plot of. <laughs> I, had this, uh, I had this thought about... Uh, I, was, I was thinking about the Ghostbusters, and in my head... Uh, they win at the end. You know, they beat Gozer. So it's like... <laughs> what? They blow up the Marshmallow Man and, you know, yeah. all that bukkake comes on down upon uh, the people and... Simba horrible. at the end becomes the, uh, the, the king of the lions. You know what I mean? Who could have seen that coming? I'll tell you who could have seen that coming. Anyone who saw any of the previous Jurassic Park movies. Right. Yes. Right. See, even he knows. So where are you going with this, it Wild Bill? It always happens. And, well, guess what's happening here in the real world? What? We have Muslim terrorists murdering mm -hmm. families on Easter. Murdering families in Brussels. I don't... Why... Let me ask you. Why does it make any special difference if they're murdered on Easter? I also... Just, I mean, I want to know, too, like... Why are you so concerned about the Muslim terrorists? But gonna... but but you're not concerned about like the constant mass shootings happening in America by people who are not Muslim terrorists who are just fucking plain crazy and just like I'm gonna get a gun and shoot a bunch of people. Yeah, you know what? That's true because yeah, there are horrible mass shootings on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean perpetrated by Muslim terrorists, and something does need to be done about it, but. He it, he he does never speak about the the mass shootings unless he's oh, talking man. about no. how like we don't need no fucking gun control in this country like no, and you no. know I'm I mean like that's his thing like so if they, if it happens here and the liberals want to do something about it like if there's an actual problem happening constantly and people are like we need to do something about this he's like fuck no you wasn't, aren't wasn't but if there's Muslims that blow up some shit halfway across the world. He's like, holy shit, batting down the hatches. Wasn't, the Muslims are coming. Wasn't there a, a Muslim terrorist shooting in California? Yeah. Yes. There was. There was. And there was, like one, was there was one, I think, like in Texas, too. Fort Hood, right? Yeah. Right. Well, uh, the, the one in California, though, happened like just within the last yeah, year. Yeah, sure. It was recent. Yeah. And, but and, I just want to tell you, I just want to tell you guys real quick, y'all being wrong about this. Oh, okay. You're being, you're being, you're being, you're being completely and utterly wrong about this. Now, um, since 9/11 done happened, everything done changed. The whole game done changed. Since 9/11 happened, it's all Muslim. That's all I worry about is Muslim, because that's what did it. That's what, did, that's what done 9/11. Muslim done 9/11. Yep. Muslim done 9/11. Yep. Fuck. That's what they done. <laughs> murdering I'm about to families die. in France, <coughs> murdering families in Israel, um, murdering Jews and Christians. Gee, who could have seen that coming? Murdering I'll tell you people who seen in France, where you normally portray people from France as being uneducated liberal apes. So now, because it suits your fucking narrative, you're all broken up about a bunch of French people dying. Well, I'm sure he's but, about to blame their liberalism on it happening, like, because uh, they were just too soft and weak. They're coming. So anybody they deserve to die. About Islam. 
And now, <coughs> our own government <coughs> leaders have flung open the borders to allow hundreds of thousands of Muslims to pour into American communities. Um, no. And I mean, a, a bunch of them are already here. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, like, we already have Muslims here, first of all. That have been second here for all, a long time. When the fuck did we do that exactly? When we were like, yeah, bring in hundreds of thousands of Muslims, that's fine. Get them all over here. I just, just empty out Syria, put them in fucking Wisconsin. Yeah. I just wonder, like, if the conservatives win, right, and then there's some big global catastrophe and we're all sent back to the Stone Age, like, what the cave uh, storytelling will be like in a couple of thousand years. It'll be like, you know, like, conservative tried to hold back tide, but liberalism too strong. Liberalism too strong. Overcame. Must never happen again. You know what I mean? Like what it like that's basically what this comes down to. And that's why like, we have that's why we have to smash your brother's head in with a rock cuz he looked at that <laughs> other boy's butt. It might be painful now, but this is the path forward for our people. <laughs> Letting him live is the first step towards being doomed by Muslims yet again. Those who don't <laughs> learn from history are doomed to repeat it. <laughs> Oh, fuck us, man. Fuck. Obama and his minions might as well call this the Obama Jurassic Park Project. Because anyone with half a brain... No. <sighs> wow, so... Really bad analogies from our conservative friends tonight. Yeah. That's just shit. That's pure yeah. shit. I mean, is that is that like, um... Is that like a combo of Jurassic Park and the Blair Witch Project? <clears throat> yeah. Like, what, why is it the Obama Jurassic Park Project? So, like, it, it, like, you know where it would be more comparable is if, like, Obama was going to open a park where people could go look at Muslims and, you know, the electric fence went down and the Muslims escaped and started killing the tourists, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Then it'd be like, you know, you could call it Muhammad Park or something. You know? it's, that, that, yeah, that really, that really is. Like, dude, somebody needs to make this movie immediately. Just, like, take <laughs> Bill's absurd fantasy of every Muslim on the planet being some froth-mouthed jihadist with a stick of dynamite strapped to his hidden vest, you know? Like, take it and make it a movie. Like, make it a movie where, you know like, what a we bunch could do? You know what would be fucking great? What? If we fucking, like, we could just, like, raise some prize money and we could just give people the catalog of Wild Bill videos and be like, okay, here's the rules. Everyone gets to make a 10-minute short film based on what Wild Bill says the world is like. That would be and amazing. And we'll fucking put it together in a compilation and release it as, like, a, a fucking movie. It's like, you know, we'll get like 10 or 12 of the shorts together and yeah. string them together and people can just watch and we'll call it like Liberal America, the dark <laughs> truth, you know, as presented by Wild Bill. <laughs> what's going to happen when ISIS hits our elementary schools, when they hit a football game, when teenagers are Why, Are you giving them suggestions? I know. Yeah. What are you trying to do? Help Who ISIS? Could, uh, oh, listen. Uh, if ISIS were to hit, like, say, the Poughkeepsie, Illinois Rose Bowl parade that happens every year, you know what I mean? Like, he's, yeah, like, don't just list off targets, retard. Massacred at the local shopping malls. Remember who brought this to America. Barack Obama and the treasonous snakes of the left. Now, many of us have had enough of this tide of evil washing over this land. I saw a cartoon the other day that made me smile. It was a man and a woman <clears throat> reading a letter with a surprised look on their faces. The man was saying, it's from our church. We've been called to active duty. <laughs> yes, indeed. It is time for men and women of faith to go on <laughs> active duty. To be dealt what do you do? You make YouTube videos. I mean, what else do you really do? I mean, like, what? Why is like, why is active duty such a vague thing? I mean, it sounds like you want them to take up arms and like, it's time for you. Right. Got, it's like, I'm subtly going to imply that we should do <laughs> violence, but just so everyone yeah. knows, I'm not saying we should do violence, but wink, active duty, y'all. Yeah. I, I uh, I'm I'm not gonna sit here and say uh, anything that anybody should do anything violent, but it is time for us to metaphorically grab those guns we've all been collecting and put those 
bullets in those guns and then take them out in the street and start killing people we don't like, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> metaphorically speaking. Oh, I love it. In the duties given to us by God. <coughs> It's now or never time shame, in the USA. Shame. If we fail to speak out boldly against these evil times, we may soon lose the opportunity. Mm. Right now, we have the right to speak the truth freely. But after the November elections, depending on who wins the White House, we may see a serious push to eliminate First Amendment rights. Good. There are laws being floated to About criminalize time. any criticism of Islam. The United Nations and their no, lap. Yeah, aren't. it's just these fucking. I mean, he's actually right, kind of about that because the United Nations has fucking tried to pass shit, and I think maybe they have succeeded on some level of like criticism of Islam is hate speech. That is bullshit. That should not be the case. Dogs. The Democrats are all for it. It's no, that's a lie. It's time for Christian courage to come out from behind church doors to get into the fray. Wherever the enemies of faith and freedom are spreading lies, we should be there speaking truth. When yeah, when I think oh of Wild God. Bill, I think of, like, truth. So is, truth is going to be spoken. Why does every, like, Christian-based political ministry, like, end and begin their videos with this superhero pep talk? That their dumb fucking followers listen to. Yeah, yeah, I'm a crusader for truth, Wild Bill. You right, man, you right. When I sit and listen to you and ain't got no job and got nothing to do, man, I'm crusading for truth because I'm telling everybody about the Muslim. Like, no, 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 no. Nobody, nobody affiliated with the Wild Bill show is a crusader for anything. Welcome unless we to Muhammad Park. <laughs> <laughs> Allah, 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 Allah. All right. All right. All right. So it's time to wrap the show up. We're going to wrap the show up. We're going to do the post show. All right. <laughs> all right. So bye, y'all. Goodbye. Goodbye all. Give us Good a night. thumbs up. Thanks for bearing with us. Well, we had to fucking delay this shit to put it out. Whatever. All right.